Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, call the Committee of the Whole uh, meeting for Monday, March 1st, 2021 to order. Uh, just a announcement to start off. Uh, uh, as everyone is well aware, uh, Niagara has moved to uh, the red zone uh, today, which has allowed um, our small businesses to have uh, limited uh, customers and uh, restaurants up to 10 people. And I would just like everyone to uh, to to uh, support your local businesses, and and to really help them out, um, as we come out of this lockdown. But uh, just to continue to uh, do the great job that uh, both our businesses and residents have done to to keep follow the guidelines and keep everyone safe, uh, because as we move forward to the better weather and every and everything, uh, just following. Uh, the strict safety guidelines as we open up uh, is the way to uh, mitigate uh, a third wave of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so as we move, uh, do any disclosures of interest? Seeing none, uh, approval of the agenda. Councillor Bothwell, you wanted to lift something I thought did on the agenda? Uh, it's from Committee of the Whole, thank you. Oh, okay or from the uh, council? Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. All right, uh, approval of agenda, need a mover and seconder. Councillor Vane and Councillor Frake. Moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Frake. Resolved that the agenda for the Committee of the Whole meeting of March 1st, 2021 be approved. All in favor? That's carried. Mayor Jordan, could I interrupt for a sec? Yes, Councillor Dunstall. Thank you. Uh, you. Just before you go to the adoption of previous minutes, which is the library board meeting, I was just curious to know when we might see the minutes of the DIA meeting, the last one in January, their annual general meeting. Usually by now we see it. I'm just wondering, maybe staff could look into it and see why we haven't got the minutes of the DIA meeting. Certainly I'll pass that direction on to Thank staff. You. Appreciate that. Thank you. Up next, we have uh, number four, the adoption of the previous minutes, the public library board minutes of January 13th and January 21st, 2021. Mover and seconder. Councillor Dunstall, Councillor Vane. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Vane. Resolved that the following be received. Public Library Board Minutes of January 13th, 2021. Public Library Board Minutes of January 21st, 2021. All in favor? That's carried. Up next, uh, number five delegations. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Harley Valentine. Harley, good evening. So many people on the screen, I don't see where he is. <laughs> good evening, Honorable Mayor. Thank you. So uh, uh, we're ready for you to go ahead. I can hear you well, so Absolutely. Thank welcome. you very much. Humbled to be here. Uh, I'm actually uh, recording live from the GBF Wellness Hub at 19 Elm Street this evening. Uh, this is an incredible room and, you know, unfortunately we couldn't all be together, but I look forward to that opportunity when it's safe to do so of giving you all a tour and, and making the personal introduction. This is uh, not going to be a typical delegation. You know, I think we're going to have some fun tonight. It's more of about sharing a vision and aspirations that I hope will inspire others. Uh, and so much, we've prepared a deck that's going to outline our objectives for community programming in 2021. So without further ado, if we could start the slide presentation. I know Sarah earlier. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much. So um, 
you know, this evening we're going to start by looking backwards. You know, 150, 100 years ago, uh, Grimsby looked much different. It was a village, uh, but that village was built by inspired, ambitious, ambitious pioneers, including the Wolvertons. You know, when I think about the Wolvertons, I think about a family that really put community and village in first, and, and that is not really better represented by their gesture to the community in building uh, 19 Elm Street, which was the Baptist Church. And sort of continuing on that legacy today, we think about the Wolverton site holistically between 13 Mount and 19 Elm as a community space. You know, when I look at this image, I see landmark buildings framed by open space and a tradition that we want to carry on today. And I think we put the first gestures forward with uh, 19 Elm Street and GBF Wellness Hub. Uh, next slide, please. So again, framing our site today, the Wolverton, comprising 13 Mount Street and 19 Elm Street. You know, we're, we're going to continue to challenge the site in 2021 and try to draw more people in as it's safe to do so and be a good neighbor to downtown Grimsby and drive energy revitalization and youth engagement back downtown Grimsby. Uh, next slide, please. So now that I've introduced the site, I thought I would make a little bit more of a formal introduction of our team. So uh, project lead, of course, I feel a bit silly introducing myself, but I am Harley Ballantyne, uh, a former Grimsby native with a passion for arts and community building. Um, next slide. Uh, community engagement facilitator, Marilyn McRae. You know, I have a lot of great admiration and respect for Marilyn. She's a longtime resident with a passion for urbanism. She loves bicycling and dogs, often seen parking her bike in front of Station One when she can find a spot. Uh, Marilyn brings a great amount of energy and commitment to her community, and I'm so pleased to have her as part of our team. Next slide. So we're going to go inside the Wolverton Hall now, where I'm broadcasting live today. Uh, next slide. I love this image. This image really captures the transformation that we've uh, delivered over the past six months. And within this space, really, the limits are, you know, there is no ceiling. Um, anything can be achieved. And I think that's not better demonstrated than what happened here recently with the Christmas hamper program and is really setting uh, a target for us to continue pushing forward as far as how we can give back um, and how we can engage. And this agenda of this presentation and delegation will be charting the success of the GBF and where they are in 2021, activating our Grimsby Music, which is a, a beloved tenant of ours that drives right home with youth engagement, downtown Grimsby revitalization, and the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, 19 Elm Street is the GBF wellness hub. This hub allows the GBF to run a number of incubator projects um, including care kits, which is a new initiative where they're reaching some 300 at risk members of the community three times a year. These kids help those at risk fighting isolation and fighting despair. Easter hamper program, which is soon upon us, which we're gearing up for. They're also launching new programs to expand social enterprise in the post COVID economy, including e-commerce. Next slide, please. This is an image that really truly captures that spirit that was brought during the Christmas hamper program and about how this space that we affectionately refer to as Wolverton Hall can be filled with community and support and reach hundreds, if not thousands in need. Next slide, please. Grimsby Music. You know, Grimsby Music is one of those small businesses that has really been sent on a roller coaster um, because of COVID you know, from shutdowns to social distancing guidelines that have really put their practices and their um, business operations um, in question. However, they found new ways to reach new audiences with online, um, online training and online lessons. Next slide. Next slide. And you know, they create such warmth and such a great space for music education and youth engagement. This is a shot inside uh, our building at 13 Mount Street, and it really represents 
the type of retail space, the type of inclusiveness that they bring. And it's one of our objectives in 2021 to bring Grimms and Music outside and outdoors. And I look forward to speaking more about that shortly. Next slide. Founder of Grimms and Music, John and his wife, Sarah, you know, incredible couple. Uh, we're so pleased to have them as part of our ecosystem and excited to continue to engage them and their youth in the outdoor spaces around the Wolverton. Next slide, please. You know, downtown Grimsby, as I said, we want to be a good neighbor. We want to do our part in renewed, energized, and a restored, um, uh, a restored town and a restored urban center. And I think we have um, a great opportunity to do that in 2021. Next slide. So when we speak about framing the outdoor space, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot to make a big impact. And we're really going to put a focus on that this year. We're looking at what are the opportunities on the frontages of Elm Street for a parklet uh, framing what is now the GBF Wellness Hub. We envision pop-up Muskoka chairs, planters, places where it's safe for community members to gather, to visit, to explore. Um, heading further south on Mountain, we picture where there was a former restaurant courtyard, a reimagined courtyard for pop-up space. Again, a place for citizens to explore, safely gather, and discover for the first time. And then we are gonna look at our generous parking lot and say, what can be done here within the boundaries of our own lot lines? How can we engage music? How can we engage the youth to really make a statement and really show Grimsby as a destination for art and culture downtown? Next slide. You know, there's a lot of great inspiration out there, but this one really hit recently home uh, with me, the Cleaston Yards in the UK, you know, an open courtyard framed by heritage space, um, filled with creativity and, and activity and wellness. Next slide. You know, a space that could be, that could pivot, that could serve a variety of functions. And this is really where we get down to the aspirational inspiration of the deck. Next slide. Is an opportunity and not our only on our courtyards, but all across downtown Grimsby. And I encourage you know, other business owners and I encourage other um, uh, building owners to really push, doesn't take a lot to make a big impact. And I think that you know, I really look forward to pushing that forward and really just putting that on display this year in 2021. Next slide. You know, um, the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital, incredible, uh, you know, it's an incredible amenity uh, to have a hospital here in Grimsby. And, you know, they, I think they have a fabulous campaign, take it to the finish. And we want to do our part as we did our part with the GVF and utilize our site and our energy to really activate and bring a new sense of energy and drive into this campaign. We are looking to activate the youth, the music, the arts, to launch a new type of program, a new type of festival. Um, and we look forward to sharing more about that. Next slide. And in the end, you know, the Wolverton loves downtown Grimsby and very honored, very, uh, very happy to be here. And we look forward to continuing to show Grimsby what we can do and how we can do it. And stay tuned because there's a lot to come. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much for your presentation, Harley. Uh, really uh, some neat ideas and, and really uh, looks like uh, you're really gonna use that space effectively and, and thinking outside the box. Uh, it really looks like something that, that uh, would lend itself to downtown Grinsby and the vibrancy of downtown Grinsby. Any questions from council, Councillor Vardy? Yes, thank you. Well, first of all, I, uh, I just want to say thank you, Harley. I mean, it, it's great to see that kind of creativity coming from someone who wants to um, honor our heritage and at the same time, uh, look at how do we revitalize our urban spaces. So I, I think you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. I looked at your website where you were looking for input from the community 
before you submitted plans to the town, which um, is a, a fantastic idea because it, it, what you're doing is bringing, helping to bring the community's vision uh, to, to what you want to do. So uh, I applaud you and I applaud your efforts and thank you very much. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. You know, just a, a note on that, uh, you know, something really special happened in 2018 when I was visiting my hometown is, you know, I came across 13 Mound Street, which I always knew as the Gables restaurant and saw it completely afresh. And really, since that moment, um, we haven't stopped. Uh, and, you know, whether it's building the ecosystem of dynamic tenants uh, from music to business, you know, H&R Block being our anchor tenant to um, a strategic partner with the GBF, you know, there's been there's been a lot of ground to cover and there's a lot of ground to cover still. So it's, uh, we take, we take a great amount of, uh, you know, a great effort to this responsibility, which is at hand, which we look forward to continue pushing forward. Councillor Cadwell. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan and uh, welcome Harley. And uh, hello again, I met you, I had the privilege to meet you uh, first time at the GBF event before Christmas, I believe, uh, when you invited the uh, a number of people to the to your establishment there, and uh, it looks great. Uh, even the first time when, when I was there at that event, my vision was all the pool tables that used to be down in that area where you where you are. I thought, wow, that is a big space, especially now that you've opened it up. And that I just want to uh, compliment you to your creative vision initiatives. For the town of Grimsby, being a uh, former resident of Grimsby, and I know your uh, your family has some history in Grimsby, uh, well known history too. So uh, I, I really like the idea of the uh, I'll call it like the uh, the courtyard area, and uh, how you're showing the different types of venues. Especially, uh, I, I think that the idea and showing that of an outdoor yoga class and those kinds of things. I mean, I think bringing people downtown. I, I think your, your vision and your ideas are fantastic, Harley. And uh, I just want to thank you very much for, for uh, coming to Grimsby and, and bringing those initiatives uh, you know, forward. And I hope you see a very strong reality to them. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cadwell. We are, as I said, the proof is in the pudding. And uh, you know, I believe uh, my former background being in arts, it's all about execution and delivery. That's something we pride ourselves on. And, you know, unfortunately, the deck couldn't capture the what our vision will will reach, but we look forward to um, surprising everyone and, and it being a very healthy surprise. So, uh, as I said, stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled at the corner of Mountain and Hill. Councillor Frank. Sorry, my button wouldn't work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Harley, welcome. Uh, as a newcomer to Grimsby, I'd like to welcome you back to, back to Grimsby. And uh, I'm, I'm personally thrilled to hear that you've taken up the, 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 band, the bandwagon here in that space. And um, I, I know you've got some pretty good plans. I think you have some pretty good plans along the music, many music side. And uh, I'd like to hear and see more about the Battle of the Bands. It sounds very interesting. I don't know if you want to elaborate more on that now, but uh, but anyways, yes, I mean it's 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 fantastic that you're taking up uh, the the flag and, and doing something in that in that part of town because it's been kind of sitting idle for quite a long time. Uh, we're coming out of COVID in the next hopefully in the next few month, number of months. Uh, spring's coming. Uh, I think that uh, the town needs to get out, hear some cheery music and uh, be able to walk around downtown, visit the establishments and so on and so forth. So uh, we welcome uh, your input and we welcome your initiatives to make that happen and we look forward to it. Thank you so much for, for your, all your initiatives. And I'd like to applaud you uh, on another side for uh, taking over the, uh, the church and certainly for offering to, to GBF, who is one of the hallmarks of, uh, of Grimsby. Uh, and I'm sure they appreciate being able to have that uh, space to expand their operation. So thank you very much for doing that uh, on behalf of the town, on behalf of council. Thank you and thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it. 
Yes, thank you, thank you Councillor Freak. You know, it's almost uh, the GB after there's so much great things to say. Just being in their space, you almost get emotional because the, behind me is actually an assembly line of the care kits that they will send out to those in need. So it, it's very quickly become a very charged space and a very special space. And, um, you know, towards the mu music program, uh, we look forward to launching it appropriately um, and with some detail. But at a high level, we will be doing an outdoor performance Every, the third Thursday of every month, starting May 27th. Uh, and it, we expect an eclectic mix of bands, um, an eclectic mix of music and, and, and solo performers. Uh, we'll be looking to Grimsby Music to pull on their former alumni, talents um, and, and instructors that they have to activate our parking lot. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we, we, I don't have a detailed schedule that we can put forward at this meeting, but, you know, stay tuned in the news and we'll make sure that everyone gets the information once it's relevant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be watching that space. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Seeing no further questions from Council, Regional Councilor Furtick. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate uh, looking at 13 Mountain and, and uh, Elm Street. And Harley, you're doing a fabulous job. I'm, I'm glad that somebody's moved into the, the buildings uh, and looked at uh, retaining its historical value and uh, after being there for 20 years it sort of brings tears to my eyes that um, it was a, a, a beautiful journey that uh, my wife and family and I did with the Great Gables restaurant but I just want to say thank you very much and uh, I look forward to helping in any way that I can in, in making it successful for you. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Mayor for letting me speak. Thank you, Wayne. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, I grew up in the shadow of these buildings and, and one of those buildings was the Gables restaurant. And um, it's no, uh, I don't think mystery that, you know, commercial businesses really preserve these two um, historic buildings to this date, uh, where otherwise, you know, they would have suffered demolition by dilapidation. So, you know, applause to you for seeing the vision and, and pivoting it towards a commercial use of that time. And, you know, we're all stewards to uh, real estate in some way. And, and you know, passing the torch forward, I, uh, as, as I said earlier, I, I see the responsibility and really what the opportunity is. And that's not lost on me. Uh, and, you know, we have, between Marilyn and I, we have boundless energy and, uh, and time for these buildings and for this town. I'm, I'm not here for, you know, I'm here for a specific reason because I have a vested interest. This is my hometown and this is an opportunity to do something very special. So that's not lost on me, so. So thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Wayne. Always great to hear from you. And again, thank you very much for your presentation, Harley, and, and thank you for what you're doing uh, downtown on Mountain Street and Elm. Uh, we need a mover and seconder to receive the delegation. Moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolved that the delegation from Harley Valentine be received. All in favor? That's carried. Up next, we have a consent agenda. Councillor Dunstall. Thank you, Your Worship. I was wondering if I could lift uh, under planning and development for the 64A. On the consent agenda? Yeah, that's been lifted. Thank you. Councillor Bothwell? Uh, I'd like to lift 6.1a and 6.1c. Okay. All right, so there's one left, right? Okay. All right, we need a mover and seconder for the uh, report FCR 21-02. Okay, mover and seconder. Councillor Ritchie and Councillor Bain. Moved by Councillor Ritchie, second by Councillor Bain. Resolved that the committee to hold hereby approves the following items and the various consent items be approved on the recommendations as contained therein. Report FCR 21-02, Grimsby Fire Department 2020 Information Report. All in favor? 
That's carried. Which one's first? Okay. All right, so we're moving to report 21-02, um, the compensation and pay equity review. Uh, we'll get a mover and seconder and then I'll open it up to discussion. Moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Sharp. Discussion. Councillor Bothwa. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Just a quick question on the, um, uh, when the RFP was put forward for this um, procurement process, um, I noticed that it talked about the job descriptions. I just wanted clarification if the job descriptions that are being used for this, um, can this uh, through this award are have been updated by the town um, and when they were updated, if that's, if that can be answered, if they were provided with updated job descriptions for this exercise. Uh, CAO, you'd like to comment on that? Through you, Mayor, to the councillor. Yes, um, we have to update them all. Once we award the contract, um, we'll be updating all the job descriptions under a, a, a standard methodology that the consultant will use so that we could measure jobs against jobs fairly. So we will not start that until the uh, contract is awarded. And we have a, a kickoff meeting with the consultant. Thanks. I just thought I read in the RFP when in the Q&As when it asked if the job descriptions were going to be provided, it said that town would, the town would provide the job descriptions, that they would not be doing them. Is that correct? Yes, through a common methodology that the consultant will um, put forth, we will be providing those full job descriptions to that consultant, and then they'll be allowed to do the work. So they are... I, I'm still confused, I guess, because... It said the town would provide them, but I'm hearing that you're going to have the consultant do some work on them. Through you, Mayor, to Councillor Bothwell, they'll set up a framework so it's consistent that we set up the job descriptions across the entire corporation the same way. Right now, we have a lot of old job descriptions. They're not updated. So they'll just assist us in the format, but we will be doing all that work. Okay, thank you. Councillor Frank. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this question is also for, for the CAO. Uh, Councillor Bothwell stole my question, but <laughs> but anyways, uh, just, uh, just a, a quick question. In, in our, when we did our, our budget uh, deliberations, uh, I think we had assigned 60000 for this particular contract. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor to Councillor Freight, we had assigned 60000 for the entire people strategy. The biggest component of it is this. We're also looking at learning and development programs, meaning setting up some virtual training for staff. We're also looking at a performance management system. And we're also looking at ways that we can continue to promote the alternate work strategies that we formulated with COVID in our space allocation. So we're doing a number of activities, but this is one of the biggest items. So this 30K is actually part of the 60K, which is going to be, which, which, which incorporates the full the full Monty, if I might say it that way, so looking at the job descriptions. Yeah, because I, I don't know how, how the, the um, consultant is going to uh, do a pay equity review without having, you know, up-to-date job descriptions. So you obviously have that in hand. Okay, it's good to hear that. Okay, th that was my question. That's all. I think we're just receiving this tonight, aren't we? And that's it? We're awarding the, we're, through you. Mayor, we're just awarding, giving us approval to award the contract that was done in a competitive bid process. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Vardy. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the CAO. Um, I'm wondering, will you be looking at other uh, municipalities for comparators? With Through you, Mayor, to Council Freak. First, uh, Councillor uh, Vardy. Vardy. <laughs> yeah. We're First, a little different. First, the important thing is to, to align all the job descriptions. That includes all part-time positions, do some harmonization roles, and then also then look at, you know, the internal equity and gender equity that we have within 
our pay system, that's probably the critical component first. And then yes, you do some market comparisons as well, but the bulk of the work will be the internal and gender equity within the corporation. And are you looking at performance pay? Are you looking at instituting a performance pay system in the town? So through Merith to Councillor Vardy, this the first step is this foundational piece, like you need a, a fair pay and internal equity and gender equity program. We're gonna do that first, develop the proper job bans from that, and then probably try to start to roll out performance management systems, probably not till next year. But if the, sorry, if you could just clarify, are you looking at uh, performance pay as part of the performance management system? Through you, Mayor, that is something that we'll bring up with, we have some uh, work arrangements that we have for salary and hourly staff, but we definitely look at this for management staff, but that's not what we're discussing in this report today. We're awarding the contract, on a compensation pay and, and gender equity program. Yeah, well, I guess I'm discussing it because I'm just trying to understand if that's one of the aims of the contract. And if I understand you correctly, you're saying, yes, it is. Through you, Mary, I just want clarity. This is a foundational piece. From this, you can start to develop some performance management systems. But this actual award is to get our internal and gender equity aligned. We have never done it in the corporation. And that's right. the first fundamental step. I understand that. So um, I guess if you were to bring in a performance management system at some point down the road, even though that's not the fundamental piece of this contract, I would assume that that would be a decision that would have to come to council because it would be a policy decision with respect to how we treat uh, uh, pay within the town of Grimsby. Through Mayor to Council already, absolutely. That would have to come to council and modifying any uh, performance management system. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cadwell. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Just wanted to comment uh, with regards to looking at other municipalities and, and I'm, I'm all in favor of that because I was involved when I was working for the town on the negotiations committee. Just to, uh, for awareness for members of council, I believe Maybe uh, Mr. Schlank can, can uh, help me on this, but uh, and again, it's it's nothing. It's not a shot either way. It's just how how we are with the town of Grimsby. Well, I, think, I believe we're the only municipality in the region that is not a unionized uh, organization. Uh, so you know, and that that does affect comparisons too, no doubt. So I remember because back in the old days, we used to look at that, and that was always uh, comparison uh, points to uh, how we negotiated. So just just by comment, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cadwell. Seeing no further questions, uh, moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Sharp. Resolved that report HR 21-02, award a contract 2021-01, admin, compensation and pay equity review, ML Consulting Services to complete a compensation review for the corporation of the town of Grinsby dated March 1st, 2021 be received and that the chief administration officer be authorized to award the contract to ML Consulting in the total tender amount of $33,600, excluding HST. All in favor? That's carried. Now we move to item uh, 6.4 that was lifted from the consent. 6.2. Oh, sorry, 6.2C. Uh, report CAO 21-07, breakdown of cost. Is that the right part? Councillor Bothwell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. I'm going to send a motion to uh, the clerk that I'm gonna read and it's quite long, so. Um, what I'd like is to put forward a motion with respect to this report. Um, the, uh, I'm just going to read it here. Uh, whereas at the committee of the whole meeting of February 16th, 2021, the committee carried the following motion by a recorded vote of 5-4. 
and I quote it, CW2145 resolved that report CAO2106 dated February 16th, 2021 be received, and that since the mayor's correspondence with this individual was deemed to be a breach of the code of conduct, and that Mayor Jordan be required to pay the 130262 that this individual charged the town for this correspondence, and that report IC1767-1020 be forwarded to those individuals pertaining to the directions given by council via various resolutions from the closed session of July 13, 2020. And whereas the Municipal Act 20, uh, 2001 Part 15 Municipal Liability Section 448 brackets one states that no proceeding for damages or otherwise shall be commenced against a member of council or an officer employee or agent of a municipality or a person acting under the instructions of the office employee or agent for any act done in good faith in the performance or intended performance of a duty or authority under this act or a bylaw passed under it for any alleged neglect or, ne or default in the performance in good faith of the duty or authority, 2001 C 25 S 448 brackets one. And whereas section 223.4 brackets five of the Municipal Act 2001 states, the municipality may impose either of the following penalties on a member of council or of a local board if the commissioner reports to the municipality that in his or her opinion, the member has contravened the code of conduct, one, a reprimand, two, suspension of the remuneration, paid to the member in respect of his or her services as a member of council or of a local board, as the case may be for a period of up to 90 days, 2006 C32, Schedule A, S98. And whereas the committee of the whole meeting of February 16, 2021, the mayor stated, and I quote, when I recited my oath on December 3rd, 2018, I, prom I promised to do my fiduciary duty and to always act in good faith towards the town of Grimsby. And I've always acted in the best interest of the town and I will continue to do so. Therefore, be it resolved that council directs that the clerk consult with the town's legal counsel for a determination if the aforementioned motion CW 2145 violates section 448 brackets one of the Municipal Act 2001 and that the clerk consult legal counsel for determination if the direction for the mayor to pay the town 130262 violates section 223.4 bracket five of the Municipal Act 2001 and that this motion and the determination and findings of legal counsel be forwarded to those individuals pertaining to the direction given by council via various resolutions from the closed session of July 13, 2020. I just would like to put that motion forward, please, for consideration. All right, Councillor Bothwell, so I have you as the mover and uh, seconder, Councillor Frake. Councillor Cadwell. Yeah, yes, thank you, Mayor Jordan. The only question I have, are we following the Roberts Rules procedures to how the, uh, how this, how we are handling this, uh, this report? And I'd like to get a, get a uh, comment from the clerk on that. Sarah? To you, Mr. Mayor. So, the I mean, the original motion is a motion to receive. Uh, we are talking about the breakdown of the cost, so a motion related to it could be brought forward if there's a mover and seconder. Yeah, I guess my question, uh, Sarah, is uh, with the mayor running this 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 part of the meeting, and it involves him, are we in following in accordance to Robert's rules? I've done some research and I'd just like to get a get an understanding to it. Can you just clarify, do you mean, oh, through you, Mr. Mayor, if you can just clarify, do you mean whether the mayor can chair this portion of the meeting? That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is up to the individual members to declare any kind of conflict of interest, so I can't really advise on that portion. Okay. I understand what Robert's rules, uh, how it, uh, what it states. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Councillor Vardy. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess my concern with having seen now the particulars of the billing, it's, it's really related not to the content of the emails, but to the fact that there's been 
a hacking of the town's emails and a security breach where, where I believe the mayor has acted in the best interest of the town uh, by bringing this to the attention of the individual as well as the CAO. Because obviously the CAO, Mr. Schlang, was involved in um, a significant portion of this bill. So uh, it concerns me. Um, this whole matter concerns me uh, because our mayor is acting in good faith. He's, he's concerned about a security breach, which uh, rightly so he should be. Um, and I, I really worry about the, the whole business of this and the direction that it's taken. Thank you. Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, under advice of, of, uh, of legal, it was determined that these emails that I have are considered my property. And that I can share with these emails what I choose. And I shared with these on the closed session of, I believe it was July the 6th, and don't quote me on the date because I'm, I'm not exactly for sure. July 13th. It was the 6th. It was July 13th. July 15th that I shared these emails with all of council. And I want to remind everyone that nowhere in the emails is there a town of Grimsby email address. So we keep on referring to the security breach and there is no town of Grimsby email addresses in any of the documentation that I have. So when we, when we discuss these, this is the, this is the point that I, I made before that there is no town of Grimsby security breach, in my opinion, with the information that I brought forward and the direction that we clearly gave on the 15th, I believe, and further to that on July the 20th, we gave further direction. So I look at this motion here now, and I do believe that there is lots of parts in there that is a reconsideration of what was passed last week. And I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Uh, Councillor Vardy. Uh, thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. If I recall correctly, at that meeting, I asked to see the emails and you would not uh, show them to me. You read out some emails. I don't know if you read out all. I have no idea uh, if what you're saying is true or untrue. I am not calling you a liar by any means. I'm just saying that you're making a statement and uh, there's, there's not been any way to, to back that up. Um, and I wanna see the emails and then I'll feel satisfied whether or not uh, there was a town email involved. And I find it even more disconcerting if there was um, no town involvement and you were in receipt of those emails and I, I have to say, there's, you know, for you to, for you to say that these are now legally yours uh, on the advice of a lawyer, um, that, can, that concerns me because to me that calls into question a, a certain uh, morals and, and ethics. Um, if I receive something I shouldn't have, uh, I'd, I'd be wanting to give it back to whoever it belongs to. Uh, not saying, oh, they're mine now. Um, so I, I have got grave concerns about this whole matter about security at the town. And we know we'll be talking about my motion uh, further on, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm gravely concerned and all of this really stinks. Thank you. Councillor Vane. Um, I have a couple of comments and questions. First of all, to the clerk, is this a reconsideration of a motion? Um, Councillor Ritchie just said that, and I'm just curious before I go any further. To you, Mr. Mayor, it would be up to the chair to determine whether it's a reconsideration or not, and it can be brought forward to council to make a, to vote on it, essentially. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, just a couple of comments. I, I'm not gonna belabor the point here. Um, 
Uh, Councillor Vardy just made a comment about questioning the legal advice. We've been doing that a little bit too much as a council, and I, I think legal advice is legal advice. We're not, none of us are trained lawyers um, at all, and uh, so I have to accept what Councillor Ritchie says. Um, if the councillor, uh, councillors and the mayor will recall from that particular closed session meeting, there were other actions taken. So at some point, this will all become out in the wash. Um, so. I, I respect everything. And, and as far as perceptions, uh, there's different perceptions on this. So we, we can sit here and pick it apart. But I, I, I would like to see if it's uh, if it's a reconsideration, I'd like to ask for a vote. Mr. Mayor, I'm directing that one to you. Thank you. Uh, the clerk has a clarification right now. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify right now. Oh, we're through you, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Just for clarification, we're talking about just receiving, initially receiving the breakdown of the cost. So it's just regarding the breakdown of the cost. Uh, there was a resolution passed at the last committee of the whole, which would be up for approval through the approval of the minutes at council. So I think it's more appropriate to pull it during council if that's what council wishes to uh, discuss further. And we are not at the, I think, there's talks, uh, we're talking about the email security, which is under the resolution section. So this is a bit premature, I think, for this conversation right now regarding the breakdown of the cost. But did Councillor Bothwell not bring forward a motion for us to address this now? Yes, so the motion, so I think, Councillor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have two thing, two comments I want to make. Uh, apparently, Wait, these emails that Councillor has in his possession belongs to. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you were written my comments. Sorry, uh, I had a question, Mr. Mayor. I, I had asked a question, Mr. Mayor, before you went on to Councillor Frank. It hasn't been answered. All right. What was your question? I was asking, uh, did Councillor Boffel not bring forward a motion related to the same matter? And I'm saying if she did, if this is a um, something that requires a, um, a majority or a two thirds vote, then we should be voting on that first. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't believe it's a reconsideration. Okay, I'd like to uh, have a vote on that. I'd like to bring it before Council. Challenge that, please. All right, the clerk will compare or prepare your challenge. Thank you. Just need a seconder for Councillor Vane's challenge. Councillor Ritchie. Moved by Councillor Vane, second by Councillor Ritchie. Resolved that the motion in regards to the breakdown of costs is considered to be a re reconsideration. Recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? No. Councillor Cadwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp?
Yes. Councilor Vane? Yes. Councilor Vardy? No. Mayor Jordan? No. That's carried. Disappointing that council wouldn't want the advice of legal in some of their actions. Councilor Vardy, you're uh, out of order. All right, we have the um, original resolution on the floor. Um, breakdowns of breakdown of costs. We need a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor Ritchie, Ritchie, second, second by, by Councillor Vane. Any discussion? Seeing none, moved by Councillor Ritchie, Ritchie, second, second by, by Councillor Vane. Resolve that report. What's it to say there? CAO. 21-07, breakdown of costs dated March 1st, 2021, be received and a recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? Yes. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? Just clarification, this just uh, to, to receive this, right? Yes, just to receive it. Okay, yes. Councillor Cadwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's Carrie. All right, we're moving to uh, report uh, 9.1A, report DPW 21-05, development charge demolition credit eligibility update. Need a mover and seconder to get it on the table. Councillor Dunstall, seconder. Councillor Vane. Any discussion? Councillor Bothwell? Uh, this is, uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan, through uh, the Director of Public Works, uh, Brandon. Um, I'm still, having read this, I'm still of the mindset that um, the, we shouldn't be retroactively approving an extension to development credits that have expired. And I have a very, very, I'm just not happy with the, the you know, that if, if the wording of this bylaw permits these two properties that had development credits expire, demolition development credits expire in May of 2020, and we're resurrecting them through this bylaw. I'm not happy with that. I have no problem. And it doesn't matter who these two properties were that are on this list that we received at the last meeting. Um, that's irrelevant to, to my thinking. My thinking is that we shouldn't be enacting a bylaw that resurrects an expired permit, uh, expired credits. Um, it's setting a precedent in my mind. Um, moving forward and the rest of them on this list, I have no problem with. So I would just like if the director could just clarify how the bylaw is worded, if these two properties will be impacted by it and, and get an extension from a, um, a terminated or, or, or ended credit system uh, of almost a year ago and they will get an extension um, as per this chart. I would just like the director to clarify that or if there is a way that the wording can be that it doesn't retroactively resurrect dead credits. Um, if I could just get clarification, that's just my biggest issue on this, on the, on, on uh, moving forward with this bylaw. Thank you. Sure. Brandon? Sure. Yeah. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor. So 
the way the eligibility works, it's always um, it's always retroactive. So the whatever date we establish, whether it's 48 months or 60 months, it's always retroactive from the date uh, that the uh, new development permit is applied for. So whatever that date is, when the new development is applied for, the, the date is counted backwards. So uh, again, it's ultimately council's decision whether they go with the 48, uh, 48 month window or the 60 month window. Um, we've uh, outlined in the report kind of what our comments were with respect to why we felt it was reasonable. Uh, and and uh, I guess that's ultimate council's decision on whether they agree with the 48 months or, or the 60 months. Thank you. Welcome. Councillor Vane. I have to agree with Councillor Bothwell. I don't agree with going back. I, um, I can appreciate what Brandon's saying, but um, I, I don't see any reasoning behind it because I, as Councillor Bothwell said, I really do believe we are setting a precedent here if we do this, um, even though um, the Director of Public Works says it's, it's common. Um, I, I'll, I'm gonna agree with Councillor Bothwell and vote accordingly. Councillor Dunstall. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, let me play devil's advocate. Uh, it, it, since uh, the two expired buildings, one had uh, the, the old fuel storage facility uh, had to be decommissioned uh, within two years, according to TSSA. Uh, they didn't have any choice but to, to remove the tanks. And the house was being vandalized so my concern is if we set a precedence where uh, a developer buys a property and has a vacant building and knows it's going to take him a few years before he decides what he's going to do with the property, uh, the building will sit there and be a liability to, to everybody around. And uh, uh, I, I think it'd be more appropriate uh, that the developer tear the building down sooner than later and, and, and be shall we say, excused for the uh, end of the expiring of the demolition permit and be granted that opportunity so that we don't have vacant buildings sitting longer than they should because they don't want to tear it down knowing that their the demolition permit will expire before they go ahead and develop the property. So I see it from the other side of the coin where I think that they were prudent in doing what they had to do at the time and I think we should uh, allow uh, the extension of 60 months and not 48 so that they can have that included in, in their uh, demolition credits. That is another, thank you. Councillor Bothwell. I just, thank you. I'd just like to add quickly that um, I think this, the developer of this property knew that the develop, knew the deadline for the development charges credit and had ample opportunity to bring forward a request to have an extension to the town uh, council. I believe under the bylaw would have had the discretion to extend it um, if it had been brought forward in May of 2020, um, knowing that it was close to expiry. The original buildings were taken down in 2016. Um, so I think there would have been ample opportunity for the um, uh, for the property owners to have brought forward a concern that uh, they wanted to get an ex some type of a, a special exemption or, or exception or extension to the to the credits um, prior to them expiring. Um, is that a possibility, Brandon? No. So um, under the existing bylaw, the 36 month window for brownfields wasn't included. It was an omission under the existing bylaw. It's an inclusion that under the new bylaw that where we are going to be permitting a 36 month window extension. So again, that was part of the developers uh, uh, comments was with, with respect to we would have or in their case, they would have applied for an extension if it was available to them under the bylaw. However, it wasn't available to them under the under the previous bylaw, the current bylaw, it would have or it will be available to them, if that makes sense. Yeah, so thank you, Mayor, through you. So um, there is, was not an opportunity for them to request an extension, and now they are coming and looking at one retroactively is what's happening here. The, the, the 33, three, Mr. Mayor, the 36-month brownfield exemption, not exemption, extension 
is kind of handled separately from the 48 month window for the demolition credit. So um, again, the, the, I guess we're using the word retroactively and, and I just caution that, that uh, it is always retroactive and maybe that's not the best word, but essentially the date to which the demolition is eligible is based on the date to which the new uh, permit is issued. So it's always based on that date working backwards, whether it's the 48 month window or the 60 month window. So okay. the developer did not have the opportunity under the existing bylaw to apply for the brownfield credit and the 48 month window uh, is, is essentially they, um, you're right, that if uh, they didn't have the opportunity to qualify because the 48 month window has since expired as well. So the, the idea being, um, if they were to apply, if, if we were to change our bylaw to allow the 60 months, those two properties would now be eligible um, for the credit under the demolition under the 60 month window and they'd also have the opportunity to request an extension for an additional 36 months under the Brownfield. Just to clarify, only one of them has the ability to qualify under the Brownfield, not the, res not the home, not the uh, two Winston Road. It does not have that ability to request the Brownfield. It wasn't sitting on the Brownfield property. Uh, again, th sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor, I think that's something we need to clarify, but I don't think that's right now is the, the point that that decision needs to be made. Um, if, if we were going to allow the uh, 30, uh, the 60 month window uh, and they were going to apply for the 36 month extension, that would be the time, appropriate time for us to determine whether or not that house qualifies or not. Because I have a concern that the date, if we do approve this with the 60 month window, it still only gives them till May 26, 2021, this coming May, two months from now, and there's absolutely no way they're going to be getting a, a building permit in two Correct. months. So, sorry, to clarify again through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, that May date would allow them, they would have to apply for the 36-month Brownfield extension through council, subject to council's approval again, uh, to extend it an additional 36 months. Right. I hear that. Other than currently on this chart, Two Winston Road does not qualify for Brownfield currently. Cor correct. Uh, but again, through you, Mr. Mayor, the developer is questioning whether or not they should apply or not. I have made, I, I guess we as council or we as staff have not made that decision yet. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying it, it, I don't think that decision is key at this point unless we're um, you know, when, once we get to the 60 month window and they have the opportunity to apply for the 48 or the, sorry, the 36 month extension, that would be the appropriate time to determine whether or not they are Brownfield or not. Thank you. Um, I don't think, did we get any information back on the region? Uh, um, I thought I'd sent an email requesting how much of the 12 million they're gonna end up getting back in, in both regional and town credits. Uh, I don't have information with respect to the region's credits, no. Because they're quite significant, how much higher than ours, correct? Uh, I can't answer that. Okay, I just, I just, I noticed that they, they put that 12 million in there and I just know that there's been a substantial number of credits, I believe, that are uh, applicable to the property. So that will reduce the amount of development credits that we're, development charges that we're going to get for that property. S Sorry, correct? through you, Mr. Mayor, can you qualify, can you... The, the, they put the 12 million in there. Is that what you, or are you re referring to my report, which indicates the 12 million? Okay, so just to clarify that uh, again through you, Mr. Mayor, the $12 million is the estimated uh, development charges that we anticipate that the developer will have to pay as part of his new development. And that's based on uh, the numbers that we had seen in terms of their number of residential units, number of uh, townhomes and commercial floor area in order to estimate that cal calculation. No, I appreciate that. It's just that that's prior to any of the credits being applied. So if there's, and I think the region has a very substantial brownfield credits. So I just wondered how much it would be reduced by, but we don't know that is what you're saying. So to, again, through you, Mr. Mayor, to clarify, the, the, this is the town's portion of the development charges. So the region has their own development charges that they would charge, which uh, uh, they would be, I guess, eligible to... Uh, receive credit on the region's development charges as well. Thank so you. The town, the town doesn't collect that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Councillor Dunstall. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to add that, uh, as it says in uh, Brandon's report, for the financial impact for us is eighty-three thousand dollars. So it's uh, you know it's 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 not significant from from a town perspective. It's pretty insignificant. So I think we should just move on. Thank you. Seeing no further, oh, Councillor Barty. Yeah, um, I am concerned about going back retroactively. And I just want to stick that I don't think $83,000 to the town is ex insignificant. There's uh, many things that we can do that are positive additions um, to the community with that kind of money. So thank you. Seeing no further questions, uh, moved by Councillor Sharp. Just one quick addition, um, $83,000, it is a substantial amount of money. For example, we bought a lawnmower for $72,000. And, um, you know, these things we, we budget for and we save for, but, but we should be considering um, these amounts. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Bain. Resolved that report DPW 21-05 development charge demolition credit eligibility update dated March 1st, 2021 be received and that council endorse amending section 3.10 of the draft development charges bylaw to extend the eligibility period for development charge credits with respect to buildings or, or structures that are demolished as a result of redeveloping the land from 48 months to 60 months prior to the date of which the development charges are payable. Uh, recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? Uh, no. Councillor Denstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? No. Councillor Catwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Sorry to do this in the middle of the vote. Can we just clarify, are we voting on retroactive as well or, or just going forward? Brandon? Sorry, yeah, uh, to clarify, the resolution before you is to, uh, rec we are recommending as staff that we change the window from 48 to 60 months. So, and that would apply from the date of any redevelopment permit application. Yes. Thank you, Brandon. Councillor Vain. I'm sorry, I'm gonna do the same thing that Councillor Stark just did. I have to ask a clarification. Um, so if we do extend it to 60 months, then they have until May 21st to get a three year extension, is that correct? That is that is correct. Those the two properties in question that um, would have the opportunity before May, before that May date to apply for an additional extension of 36 months under the Brownfield credit. So again, that decision would become uh, before council. Again, the, the request is made through the uh, uh, treasurer um, and then uh, council have the opportunity to vote on whether they agree with that extension. Okay, and you're just concerned about what Councillor uh, Dunstall said about leaving buildings standing up too long. Okay, I'm going to say yes. Thank you. Councillor Vardy? No. Mayor? No. That's carried. Now we move to report uh, 9.1B, report uh, DPW 21-06, Development Charges Background Study. Need a mover and seconder to get it on the floor. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, seconder. Councillor Bain. Any questions or comments? 
Seeing none, the move by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Vane, resolved that report DPW 21-06 2020 development charges background study and 2021 development charges bylaw approval dated March 1st, 2021 be received and the council approved bylaw 21-14, a bylaw to establish development charges for the town of Grinsby and the council approved bylaw 21-15, a bylaw to amend bylaw 1673 as amended by bylaw 1839, respecting development charges for the town of Grinsby. All in favor? Opposed, if any? That's carried. We're moving to planning and development consent report 6.4 a report or section 6.4 a report byl 21-01 proposes proposed changes to the town of Grinsby noise bylaw number 11-22 is amended councillor dunstall do we need a mover and seconder first I haven't. When I get the resolution in front of me, I will ask. For oh, well, okay. All, All right. right. Well, yeah. Let, All right. Let, oh. I've got a. We need a mover and seconder now. I'll move it. All right. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, seconded by Councillor Vardy. Discussion, Councillor Bothwell. Uh, I appreciate the staff's efforts in putting this together, and I appreciate that they understand that we do have, um, that the community has raised these concerns with respect to vehicle noise and uh, have approached the NRP, um, our local guys in District 8, which is great. Um, after reading the recommendations in this report, I would respectfully ask that we look at um, amending the motion, and I, it would need to be a friendly amendment, uh, to receive uh, the report and that staff be directed to approach Niagara Regional Police requesting that they undertake an Operation Loud and Clear initiative for the town of Grimsby commencing early summer of 2021 and that, this, that the bylaw 1122 be reviewed more comprehensively as part of the bylaw review exercise being undertaken in 2021, which is the yeah. Do I need to put that as a uh, just Just before you move forward on that, um, Antonetta, I guess uh, Sean um, Parant is here, a st our staff sergeant tonight. So uh, uh, I wonder if we could let him in so he is involved in this conversation. Sure, through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you for that. Yes, we have both our new bylaw enforcement officer, Henry Bowes here and Sergeant uh, Parant, uh, who's also here to uh, answer any questions that you may have. And Henry had also wanted to take council through some high level uh, pieces of the report. Perhaps we could do that first if council is willing and then we can move forward in a discussion and take questions from council. Mr. Yeah, Mayor, uh, point of clarification. Sorry, they just, um, yes. with all due respect to the director, it's Staff Sergeant Perrant. You said Sergeant, sorry, that may not be important oh. to some. I just wanted to clarify, that's all. Yeah. Sorry, Anthony, no disrespect intended. No, through you, my apologies to both council and the staff sergeant. All right, so discussion, uh, we have uh, Councillor Bothwell was up first. So you can, um, I've just put forward that uh, after reading the record. Okay. That can be discussed if, if we have, when it comes up, thank you. Perfect, all right. Uh, so we'll move to Councillor Dunstall. So, so, yeah. Yes, CIO? Yeah, no, Henry just, <laughs> Henry wanted the opportunity to talk to council maybe before the questions, if, if we may. All right, that sounds good. Right. Uh, welcome, okay. Henry. And Staff, Staff Sergeant Sean Brown also would like to add yeah. it. Okay, thank you. All right, welcome Staff Sergeant as well. Um, you must be on the other page, so I can't see you. I'm here. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, 
Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Mayor, councils and members of the public. Um, we're providing support for council's information to review the Town of Grimsby Noise Bylaw 11-22. There's been several complaints made in regard to vehicles with altered or no mufflers. Uh, section 75, subsection one of the Highway Traffic Act regulates this type of issue. So just point of operation loud and clear is through the Niagara Regional Police and their officers target specific vehicles with altered or removed mufflers. Um, the current noise bylaw covers noise from an, from an internal combustion engine, except from a muffler um, or a muffling noise canceller. And municipal law enforcement staff do not have the legal authority to stop a moving vehicle and do not, or nor do have the expertise to inspect a motor vehicle or the muffler attached to that vehicle. It is recommended that we make no changes to the current noise bylaw and work with Niagara Regional Police. Thank you. Thank you. And Staff Sergeant, did you want to comment now or just want to answer questions as they come up? Well, I'll answer questions as they come up. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Councillor Dunstall. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to lift this, because as I read through it, I, I began to realize how awkward and difficult it is for us as, as residents who complain about these incidences, is how to really enforce uh, somebody driving by with, say, a hole in the muffler, or they modified the vehicle and it's uh, excessive. Uh, because it's a moving target. And of course, uh, bylaw has no authority to do anything. It's, uh, it's, it's under the provincial statutes uh, under the Highway Traffic Act. So uh, I, I, it, to me, it looked like uh, t uh, t town staff had done an excellent job at reviewing the noise bylaw and that we should just leave it the way it is. And I, I've got to uh, uh, thank them for doing that, uh, but also keep in mind how much work we've already Put on onto them by having to go through all this, and and sometimes uh, we're, we're no further ahead at, at the end of the day. So let's keep that in mind going forward with other uh, notice of motions that we bring forward for our staff to have to give reports on because this is uh, it creates a lot of work. And uh, at the end of the day, we don't have uh, we, we're still in the same situation we were before. So so thank you. Henry, for bringing that forward to us too, it really helps identify uh, professionally how, how, how we ha can do the best we can with what we have, and there isn't much more we can do at this point. Uh, thank you. Councillor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, in, in relation to the, the noise bylaw, I mean, this was passed back in, I think, 2000, November of 2011, is that correct, Henry? At the time, I, I, I know maybe, maybe Councillor Cadwell can remember, I think he was on council at that time. But at that time, when that, when that bylaw was revised and passed through council, uh, it was publicized wide, far and wide across, across the region. Uh, we had a commitment from the head of the Niagara Regional Police at the time. I mean, and it was also publicized. It was photos taken and a whole bit. I, I've ha I have the article in my files here somewhere. And there was a big commitment to uh, uh, attempting to uh, curb as much as possible the noise, particularly as it related to vehicles and particularly as it relates to the Highway Traffic Act. Uh, and I, I don't think that we've moved that much further ahead since November of 2011. I know it's awkward and it's difficult to do. I know that our own bylaw officers can't do anything about this, uh, but as a town, I think we can put preventative uh, signs up along Highway 8 and other, other roads uh, along Grimsby, you know, quiet hospital zone, uh, you, know, you, you know, quiet uh, school zones. We don't have a very good uh, representation of signage across the town. I think that might help a little bit, but in terms, uh, to Sergeant, um, Staff Sergeant Sean Caron, I don't know what, I mean, with, with the upcoming um, addition to your force in Niagara Region, could we look forward to a little more effort on your part and your guys 
uh, of trying to uh, police this particular bylaw for us. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of the Highway Traffic Act. That's what you uphold and that's what you police. Is there anything uh, you can see going forward where we, because it is really, we get a lot of complaints. I mean, it is really, really, uh, since I arrived here in Grimsby so many years ago, uh, it, it's been a constant complaint. Uh, so I just like to see us do something uh, more than what we're doing. And I, I'd welcome some thoughts from, uh, from Staff Sergeant uh, Perron. For sure, thank you. I, I appreciate the question. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yeah. um, the thing, we're definitely committed to it and our commitment has never wavered. Um, just like one of you had mentioned earlier on in the meeting, it's a bit of a target for us too, just like it is for bylaw when they, it was referenced in the, in the report that, that um, was read off. Um, if we get a, a vehicle plate that we could follow up on, we do that. We did that a couple weeks ago on an on issue in the town of Lincoln where officers go to the, the our registered owner's house and if charges are warranted, but they'll lay charges. Um, with that said, sometimes we can't be everywhere. And I've, I sometimes sound like a broken record when I say that, but we, we police a really large landmass in the Niagara region, the largest landmass we're responsible for in eight district alone. So our officers can't be everywhere all the time. If it's a persistent problem in a neighborhood where someone says there's this red car that's going up and down my street and it's you know rattling my windows, by all means, we put officers in the area and we follow it up. Uh, since I've come to 8th District, we've spoken at length with Harry and now with Henry since uh, since he's come in, as well as Brandon, about the traffic and noise-related issues there. Um, our traffic unit has recently increased its complement, like our central traffic unit out of, uh, out of headquarters has increased its complement. So I've been in talks with the staff sergeant there to have extra officers out in our area and conduct enforcement in problematic areas. So in my conversations with Harry the last couple of weeks in particular, we've talked about having a meeting probably in late March, early April, set up some workshop with town staff and myself and a couple other officers in our traffic unit to come up with a, a more concentrated plan to target some of the problematic areas and to respond to them in a more efficient manner. Uh, if I might come back to you on, on that. I mean, there's, there's, the, there's the prevention piece and there's after the fact piece. I mean, like, you know, we're talking about, you know, you know, taking down license plate numbers and that's fine for someone who might live in town. You might get, you might catch a, a perpetrator that's in town doing this kind of thing. But I mean, outside of that, I would say the majority of these problems are from pass, passers, passersby. People are going through the town. And, you know, if we get a license, plate, it's very difficult to stand out there in a corner and get the license plate number of a motorcycle or a car which may never come back to town again. It's, it's just getting the message out there. It's the preventative thing that we're trying to do here is prevention. After the noise is made and you, you know, you've you upset a few people in, in the process, that's that's fine. But I mean, the thing is, it's the prevention of it. I don't, and that's the problem. What do we do to, what do we put in place to try and get the message out that we are not a town that puts up with, with this, these uh, noise solutions on the roads. So, there's two pieces to it. Yes, I can copy down the name of a guy down the street here that has a motorcycle that revs up his engine when he passes my house or that type of thing. But there's the prevention of people as they come through town as well. And I know that Councillor uh, uh, Vane had some issues over his way and a number of occasions in the last number of months with noises and so on and so forth from, from cars and vehicles like that. So how, So we need to really push somehow putting in place some kind of preventative measures and uh, I don't know what that is. Um, maybe more police, uh, which you are, which I hear you can't can't do. But it was, it's 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 a it's a bit of a hard nut to crack. I know, but we need to do something because there's no point in having you know a fantastic, wonderful noise bylaw in place if we have no teeth to make it to, to make it work. Uh, for sure, and, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I appreciate your frustration for sure. Uh, one of the things I've found has been super successful since I've come out here is the social media aspect of what we do. And we can work in conjunction with the town. Um, our district, 8th district, has its own Twitter account. And our officers, when they stop a car, whether it be for speeding or some type of events, will post pictures of it as a sort of a deterrent and an educational piece to it. And that seemed to be pretty successful. I know since I've taken over in July, we've actually doubled our Twitter followers out here in, in Grimsby, which has been good but we can also team up with our corporate communications unit when we do launch this operational out and clear this spring 
and get a really um, positive preventative social media piece going out to the community. So that's that's part of it, and and I and I would I would like to suggest uh, through uh, through you, Sean, that maybe you can assist our our public works folks uh, with you know proper maybe some proper signage through the town, just to let folks know that when they're passing through town and they have these high powered cars and motorcycles and so on and so forth, that we do have a bylaw in place and we enforce it. So beware. I mean, there's, there's all, I mean, I was looking at the internet earlier, earlier today, and there's all types of different signs we can put in different places. For example, hospital zone. I mean, when someone is driving past the hospital and they're revving up their engines, there's sick people in the hospital. There's people trying to rest. They're, they're passing these retirement homes, these care homes. They're passing schools where kids, where kids are in school studying. I mean, so, you know, there has to be something we can do along those lines that, that, you know, so maybe I'm going to ask you now and try and get a commitment from you now that you would work with our public works and our, our bylaw guys to find signage we can put up around the town to help us with this on top of your communication through social media and that type of thing that would also work as well. Can I, can I get that commitment from you? Oh, hundred percent. Yep. Like I said, I've been in touch with Harry, Henry and Brandon at length since I've taken over in July and I have good working relationships with all three of them. And we can, we can definitely tackle that. That's fantastic. Thanks, by the way, for all your hard work here in town. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Cadwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. And uh, thank you, uh, Henry, for your report and staff that also was involved. Uh, Sean, I, my, I just got a couple questions and I'll address them to you, uh, uh, Staff Sergeant. With regards to uh, the, the noise, and if you could just give us a little bit of a a storyline to, and uh, I've, I've been following this for quite a while. Uh, there's, a, there's a resident in town that's been very active too. Uh, his first name is Ron. Anyways, uh, so with these aftermarket mufflers, obviously they're not they're not being installed at a reputable business. So how does all that happen? If you can just kind of walk us through that briefly, then I have one more one more question. I appreciate. Thank you. For sure. Thanks for your question. Um, yeah, like you said, sometimes they are being installed at reputable places because some of these people go and have car shows where they may be at legitimate racetracks. There's racetracks up in Toronto where they can race these types of vehicles. Um, so they're not illegal to sell per se, but, but they are illegal to operate on Ontario roadways under the Highway Traffic Act. So it may be done at reputable um, repair shops or in someone's garage or in their driveway for that matter. So the purpose of them really is for off-road use, and I use quotations for that, meaning racetracks and things of that nature. Um, so that's how that came about, if that answers your question. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, also, just uh, in the uh, comments and options to the report, and I, and I support all three of them, I think they're, it's a great plan. Uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on, your, uh, on the Niagara Regionals, police, uh, their operational sorry, Operation Loud and Clear program, how successful that's been and, and how often we could maybe have this come to Grimsby and just, just the criteria to it, uh, Sean, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Uh, thank you. I, I don't have the stats in front of me. I know we did put out, our service did put out a media release about it, about the success they had in Niagara Falls. That, that'll be found on our website. I want to say that went out probably in October of this year, end of October. Mm -hmm. The stats pertaining to that would be on our website. Okay. Um, and we haven't quite come up with a, a plan as to how we're going to implement it other than targeted enforcement with members of our traffic unit and our uniform patrol officers in Grimsby. So preliminarily, from my perspective, as the district commander in Grimsby, we're going to have officers assigned to work problematic areas over and above what they do on a daily basis in terms of calls for service. Their sole mission, quote unquote, that day will be to go out and look for problematic vehicles on the roadways. But we're going to start with an educational piece because that's that gets a lot of traction through our social media, through a media release announcing that we are going to be undertaking this endeavor. And then from there, we'll go right into the enforcement aspect of it. Yeah, thank you, uh, Sean. If I may, so for people's understanding, I mean, as loud as some noises are, the only way you can really, uh, I guess, if you're going to be challenge the owner of the vehicle, is you have to register that that noise through uh, through the through decimal uh, um, I'll call it def decimal apparatus type of equipment. Then I guess, eh? 
Right, uh, not, not necessarily as far as the Highway Traf Traffic Act is concerned. There are some municipalities, I want to say Barry, uh, Oakville in particular, that have decibel readers that they use as part of their bylaw enforcement for issues such as this. But if, from a policing perspective, at least not in Niagara, we don't have that yet. Um, but some other services in, in uh, Southern Ontario do have that, but that is something that is being looked at. Great. But again, the Highway Traffic Act doesn't necessarily identify a particular decibel level that the vehicle has to be within. Okay. All right. Thank you for the education, John. No problem. Councillor Vane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, staff, I have a question, a couple of questions for you. Um, first of all, uh, when Councillor Frake was talking, I was kind of smiling because I remember one of the first conversations I had with him, he talked about when he was laid up and the noises that used to go by his home and, and they were horrible. And, and he's right, they haven't changed any since that time. Um, and they are really bad. But I also, um, I want to clarify something. Well, first of all, I want to say your social media account is excellent. I do follow it. Uh, and uh, the education per uh, point is fantastic. I uh, remember many, many years ago, I was going over a hill. I was running late for an appointment and um, naturally I got stopped. It was in Toronto. I got stopped by the Toronto police officer and uh, I've never sped in that area ever again when I'm in that area over the years after that. So, I mean, just the having an officer stop you makes you think about it. Uh, so I agree with that as well. I just want to clarify two other the things though, traffic unit you say has been enlarged or increased just for educational purposes. I mean, I, I have a pretty good idea, but could you tell us approximately how many officers would cover all of eight district or if not all of eight district, all of Niagara region? How many are dedicated to traffic alone? In, in, in eight district, in eight, eight, sorry, eight districts, a general patrol area. So the officers right. do everything from traffic to criminal calls for service. So they don't, I can't, that's part of their whole focus. They enforce everything from traffic act offenses to criminal code. So it's not in one particular, one particular issue they deal with. So we don't have a dedicated traffic unit in Grimsby and none of our detachments or, or, or headquarters units do, or sorry, not headquarters, but our larger districts. They don't have dedicated right. traffic units. We have a dedicated traffic unit that's uh, headquarters based that deals with calls all over the region that are traffic related. So if we were to do this program in Grimsby, would it be run out of the headquarters unit or would you be dedicating an officer? It would be, it would be out of Grimsby. So it would have patrol officers from Grimsby as well as uh, supplemented by traffic officers from our headquarters traffic unit. So it'd be a joint effort between our, our officers in Grimsby and our traffic unit. Okay, uh, one last comment for you and then I have another comment for council in general. Um, love your hat collection. Would love to see oh. it some. Yeah. Anyways, the um, comment in general, I, I know Councillor Frank is talking about putting up signs. My only concern is if you start putting up too many signs, people become oblivious to them. And it also becomes much like a pollution. Too many signs is like pollution. It distracts drivers and, and then or, you know, a lot of times people just ignore them. So I just would urge some kind of caution about the signs. I agree with the hospital one or around a retirement home. I think those are excellent ideas. Um, but then again, if somebody's already in that area and they've got the noisy muffler, it's not going to change. I think this is really something that we should just um, leave to the staff sergeant to sort out. Maybe we've made them aware and hopefully, I, and I have seen on the Twitter campaigns where you've been doing Beamsville and you get the occasional driver that forgets the speed limit is 50 kilometers less than what they're doing, that type of thing. That's always nice to see when you're getting those dangerous drivers. And I know the priority is that, um, but this is annoying. And uh, if you can do something great, um, you know, I understand there's other priorities in the meantime, but I appreciate everything. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Councillor Vardy, I believe you haven't spoken yet. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Perron. Um, I, I'm, this is a little off topic from noise, but it's a, a question I'd like to ask while you're here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when I lived in Ottawa, we could access maps that would tell us um, where there was crime in the Ottawa area. So, and it would it would show whether it was sort of uh, car break-ins, home break-ins, um, various kinds of, you know, uh, rapes or or what have you. And then you'd be able to to sort of start to see you know, are, are certain sort of criminal units working in a particular area. So it was, it was very useful to know. Does, 
uh, Niagara region have anything like that? Because I think that would be a very useful uh, thing to have. I'm not aware off the top of my head if we do, but I could definitely look into it and get back to you. I'd, I'd certainly appreciate that. And For you sure. might want to take a look at what uh, the city of Ottawa has, right. their, their police force, because it, it, it really was, um, and it was quite up to date and uh, quite interesting. For sure. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Councillor Bothwell, then Councillor Dunstall. Councillor Bothwell. I just wanted to, I can have Councillor Dunstall go first. It was just to refine with the clerk the wording of my amendment, because um, I think that what we're seeing in the conclusion of this report is that they do say it's recommended that the town approach Niagara Regional Police in the spring and request they carry out the enforcement strategy. But I don't know what the motion is worded for this um, report because the recommendations um, at the beginning of the report do not say that. So I just wanna ensure that it sounds like the town is doing some great activities in conjunction with, um, with Staff Sergeant Sean, and I think this is wonderful, but I'm concerned that we need to get it documented in the motion. That's why I've brought that forward um, as it was in the recommendations and the conclusions at the end of the report. And also that I believe this bylaw should be reviewed. It's over 10 years old. I'd like to have some public input and I'd like to have it come back when the, uh, the bylaw reviews are done. That's why the motion is uh, the amendment um, has those wordings in there. It's a very high profile thing with the public. I think it's a great opportunity for us to have it brought back and have um, some public engagement on it. So um, if the clerk can just uh, let us know after Councillor Dunstall has spoken, whether um, those 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 two uh, sections can be added as amendments. Thank you. You're welcome, Councillor Dunstall. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Uh, um, back to Staff Sergeant Perron. Thanks so much for being here tonight to help us through this. And and I I had a specific question that, which was technical about the measurement of noise, which would be decibels, I guess. But how do you ascertain when a vehicle is uh, making excessive noise if you have no method of measurement as you were saying as uh, some other municipalities have it but we don't here uh, so if, if for example if i were to call you and say i i just saw a noisy vehicle and it's parked at the grocery store and i'm complaining and uh, how, how would you know the officer gets there on time what what's the process if i might ask for sure. So the, uh, your, the situation you present is no different than an officer sitting in a parking lot on the side of the road monitoring traffic. So as you've all commented on throughout the course of this, this meeting, you, you know when a vehicle is making a noise that is over and above what a typical vehicle off a dealership lot should be making. So the officer would then stop the vehicle and that vehicle is making a noise for some reason or another. Either it has no muffler at all, it has a, or it has a defective muffler, or it has an enhanced muffler. Right, so those any of those three scenarios are offenses under the Highway Traffic Act. So by virtue of the noise itself, the noise itself would alert the officer to a situation. They have authority to stop the vehicle, and a vehicle being driven off of a brand new dealership lot would not be making the kind of noise that the vehicles we're all talking about in this conversation are making. So then the officer would inspect the vehicle. And it would be pretty obvious if the vehicle has straight pipes, no muffler, a modified muffler or um, like an enhanced muffler. And if it had any one of those situations presented itself, it would be an offense under the Highway Traffic Act and, and they would be charged. Okay, that's, that's a good answer, thank you. You have the... So this is the amendment, all right. So we have the amendment here from uh, Councillor Bothwell. It's a be it resolved report BYL 21-01 proposed changes to the Town of Grimsby Nose Bylaw number 1122 as amended be received and that staff be directed to approach Niagara Regional Police requesting that they undertake an Operation Loud and Clear initiative in the Town of Grimsby commencing early summer of 2021 and that bylaw 11-22 be reviewed more comprehensively as part of the bylaw review exercise being undertaken in 2021. Council happy with that? Councillor Cadwell.
Councillor Cadwell, you're muted. There you go. Sorry. Uh, isn't most of that already in the uh, on page three of the report under the comments and options? Just clarity. That's all I'm looking for here. What the what Councillor Bothwell's friendly amendment uh, is bringing is again, isn't that kind of in the comments and uh, options? Antonetta, do you want to comment on that? If the um, if the the body of the report is is a directional a direction by council if if approved so through you mr mayor <clears throat> the wording that staff be directed to approach niagara regional police requesting that they undertake an operation loud and clear initiative in the town of grimsby commencing early summer of 2021 that is in our um, conclusion of the report and it's in the spirit of collaboration should council wish that uh, you know, that be formally a staff request as opposed to what we've heard it's already happening. Uh, we can look at that piece and take that on. And then the other piece is that bylaw 1121, uh, sorry, 11-22 be reviewed more comprehensively as part of the bylaw review exercise being undertaken in 2021. Um, so the intent then I understand it is that we revisit this bylaw again, certainly for community engagement, but I guess my question would be, you know, are there a series of other more outdated bylaws that we should be taking a look at? So I pose that, you know, perhaps we can come back with that. I'm not sure if it'll be in 2021, but um, those would be the pieces that I have. We have some other bylaws that we're working on that I think are much more outdated and perhaps uh, more important, but happy to take that direction from council should they wish us to do that. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. I guess my question would be to the Staff Sergeant Sean Pernell. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, 12 municipalities around the region. And how would you think uh, our bylaw compares? I mean, I sit there and, and listen to everything that's been said here tonight. And I think that, uh, you know, with our staff doing a, a review of our bylaw, they say that uh, no changes are required at this time. And I think this, uh, although it's always great to have um, uh, the public's input, I think that this bylaw is pretty cut and dry, in my opinion, and I think that it's withstood the test of times. And until we, until the Niagara Regional Police is looking to maybe endorse uh, a program such as Oakville's and all the rest, and I don't think we're there yet, but until we're doing that, I think that this bylaw is very sufficient and, and as effective as it's going to be at this time. Now, I, I understand Councillor Frake's point in education, and education is always another component when it comes to uh, trying to enforce our bylaws, but it's just that, it's education. This bylaw here, in my opinion, is probably as, um, as good as it's gonna get for, for the next little while. So I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are on our bylaw. Staff Sergeant? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, unfortunately, I really can't speak to a comparative of your bylaw in relation to the other 11 municipalities in the region. I'm not, I'm not up to speed on the rest of them. Um, it does seem like it addresses the issues. And like I had said in my talk, I believe it was with Henry when he was asked me, he had asked me about this as he was proposing it, is that if an officer, like I, the example I had given the officer sitting on the side of the road writing a report in a parking lot, and he were to hear a loud noise or a loud vehicle go by and stop it and find an offense, the officer would probably 99.5 times out of 100 lay a charge on the Highway Traffic Act as opposed to the the respective town or city bylaw in which he's working. So as it pertains to vehicles and muffler noise in relation to vehicles, the officers are more likely to lay charges under the Highway Traffic Act as opposed to the uh, like a respective town or city bylaw. So in that regard, in terms of addressing that problem or, or enforcing that issue, uh, the Highway Traffic Act as it reads in the, in the proposal would be sufficient from a policing perspective. So, so thank you for that answer, because uh, that also brought up a very good point that, yes, you guys will enforce the Highway Traffic Act, and our bylaws are just that. And here we are looking at, uh, you know, I think, with what Councillor Bothwell has proposed, a tremendous amount of work, where right now our bylaw officers do not have the capability to stop traffic and potentially even enforce, uh, enforce the bylaw, per se, without, without it being challenged. Uh, on many uh, on many fronts. So I, I think that the, the bylaw is sufficient as is, and, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. 
Councillor Sharp, then Councillor Frake. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, a comment I have in the question is with regards to um, to the amendment that Councillor Bothwell has um, to do the public consultation on this. Um, I'm not opposed to having this bylaw, and um, but I do think that um, our resources for public consultation could be better used for for things. For example, we're doing a um, a bonfire bylaw right now. Um, I have aspiration to bring a chicken backyard chicken bylaw. Um, there are, uh, I don't know, we, we've got an upcoming um, firearms discharge bylaw that we we really want to focus on and get these things right. And um, from hearing the staff sergeant, when he says 99.5% of the time, it means that the, they'll never uh, enforce under our bylaw. But again, like I said, I'm not opposed to having a bylaw, so we can pass this bylaw and we will have it. But um, community consultation, um, I want to save our resources. And um, I think that they can be better used. So um, on, on that amendment, can we, can we vote on the amendment? And then can we vo vote on the, um, on the bylaw? Clerk. Uh, we still so have people, people on the discussion, discussion list. list. No, I don't mean. I don't mean call the question. I'm asking the question to the clerk. Is that um, can rather than just amending the bylaw um, to add the portion where we would also pass the bylaw and we would send it back to staff for like a consultation with the community? Um, can we split those two so that we would vote? on whether or not we would send it back to staff for consultation with the community and still pass the bylaw. Because I don't oppose the bylaw and I know that people are putting their hands up now, but I don't oppose passing this bylaw. There's nothing wrong with not allowing people to have noisy aftermarket mufflers or damaged mufflers. But um, I wanna save the staff resources for the bylaws that we are currently discussing, which is the firearms bylaw and the um, the open air burn that's a uh, backyard bonfires. And um, I really want to hear about uh, potential for, for chickens, like small amount backyard chicken pet egg laying hen type. And, um, but these things, whether or not you're interested in them is um, we don't have time to, to do it all. Can, uh, can I get an answer from the clerk? Antoinette, you want to uh, through you, Mr. Murray, happy to defer to the clerk, but I was just going to add a point of clarity that the bylaw already exists and is in place. So staffer, the staff recommendation report is that the bylaw stay the way it is. We're not asking for the bylaw to a new bylaw to come forward, just as a point of clarity. Okay, that's that's very helpful. Um so can, can we, can you read the motion? Yeah, I can read the, I can read the motion again. Be it resolved that report BYL 21-01 proposed changes to the town of Grinsby noise bylaw number 11-22 as amended be received and that staff be directed to approach Niagara Regional Police requesting that they undertake an Operation Loud and Clear initiative in the town of Grimsby commencing early summer of 2021 and that bylaw 11-22 be reviewed more comprehensively as part of the bylaw review exercise being undertaken in 2021. Okay, um, thank you, Mayor Jordan, that's all. Councilor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to add on to what Councilor Ritchie said, it's not, you know, the education piece is an important piece. I think we have to go down that road. And I think that Staff Sergeant Parant is already has a system in place for that. We could probably do something on our own website. But, you know, I have no big issues with the current bylaw. I mean, the current bylaw covers a lot of noise different types of noises. The, the noise created by vehicular traffic is a part of it. I mean, there's a, lot of other, there's a lot of other noises in there which we do police or do enforce through our bylaw officer. 
uh, you know, like lawnmowers and power equipment and so on and so on and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the, the vehicular noise, I mean, it is actually our bylaw is actually all it does. It's a copy and paste and a reflection of what the Highway Traffic Act says, word for word. There's no question about that. That is, we cannot police. So there's no, there's no doubt about that. That has to be policed by the Niagara region, regional police. I mean, that cannot be policed by us. We cannot stop cars. We can't stop vehicles. We can't do that type of thing. So I just want to see, you know, uh, a bigger uh, presence uh, from our Niagara Regional Police because our bylaw officers can't do this. They can't cover this one. I agree with you. The current bylaw won't address that. It, it, it's, it's all it is is a copy and paste of the Highway Act. So uh, I agree. I mean, the bylaws, I have no problem with it. The thing is, um, also, I do believe that we should do some of the signage, appropriate signage in the right places around town. And I still believe that will help a bit. I know that when I drive through uh, a, a, a town and I'm coming through a hospital zone, quiet hospital zone, I take, I, take, uh, I take very good care that I don't rev myself, my motor or, you know, race through the town. I mean, I, 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 I watch those signs. I mean, they're very important and I, and I respect them. So there are some places, some signs we can put up, which will help, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm not suggesting we put, you know, signs in every street corner, but there are strategic places around town where we can do that. And I think it would help a bit. And I, I'd like to ensure that we do that. But as far as the bylaws concerned, it's not a, it's not the biggest issue. It's just policing the traffic, the noisy traffic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Dunstall. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I, I, I just wanted clarification. You've read out the amended motion. It's not the original motion because I much no. vote on so, the original motion, not the amended motion. So procedurally, the amended motion is on the tape on the floor right now. So we vote on the amended motion amended, first amended, and then, then, um, the and then vote on it. OK, thank you for your clarification. You're welcome. Seeing uh, no no further speakers, uh, I have a uh, amendment amended motion here, uh, moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Frake. Be it resolved that report BYL 21-01 proposed changes to the Town of Grimsby noise bylaw number 11-22 is amended, be received, and that staff be directed to approach Niagara Regional Police requesting that they undertake an Operation Loud and Clear initiative in the town of Grinsby commencing early summer of 2021 and that bylaw 11-22 be reviewed more comprehensively as part of the bylaw review exercise being undertaken in 2021. Recorded vote. Officer Bothwell. Yes. Councillor Dunstall. No. Councillor Frake. Yes. Councillor Catwell? No. Councillor Ritchie? No. Councillor Sharp? No. Councillor Vane? No. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's defeated. Now I'll move to the original motion. Uh, moved by, by Councillor Dunstall, Dunstall. Second, second by Councillor Vardy. Resolved that report BYL 21-01 proposed changes to the Town of Grimsby noise bylaw number 11-22 as amended dated January 18th, 2021 be received and that no changes be made to the Town of Grimsby's current noise bylaw number 1122 at this time. Uh, recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? No. Councillor Catwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? No. Mayor Jordan? No. That's carried. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Sean, uh, for coming out and uh, nice uh, meeting you actually in person, well, almost in person, virtually. Uh, did talk to you uh, in email and phone. And um, Henry, uh, 
have a good evening as well. Thank you very much uh, for both of your uh, help this evening. Thank you. Up next, we're uh, moving to uh, resolution 10.2A, uh, uh, PA 21-06, uh, planning touch point. Uh, just a mover and seconder first, and then we'll hear from Antonetta. Mover and seconder. Councillor Dunstall's mover, new seconder, Councillor Vane. And Antonetta, uh, do you want to give a description first or? I can if it's helpful through you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, now the second of our planning touch points. It includes the cannabis study update, uh, an update on 15 Lake Street, which has been an application that was submitted uh, back in 2015. So we want to bring that as an update, as well as just a brief update on the Grimsby Beach land use planning study, although we also sent council uh, a separate email under a separate cover regarding an update to the study, including the draft documents that were circulated. And then also part of the appendix, you'll find what uh, staff had committed to quarterly, which were um, the activity and status report sheet, and that is included as an appendix to the overall report. Walter and I are here, should any questions uh, come up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonetta. Questions from Council? Seeing none, uh, moved by Councillor Dunstall. Oh, Council Councillor Bothwell, question? Yeah, quick, thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just if uh, the Director could clarify, um, there was, a status update on the main street property where the fire was. And I think it's indicated 12 to 16 sunny peach. I just would like if she could just expand on um, that was going to be a two story that there is there three parcels there that are going to be rebuilt. And this is one of them because I thought it was 12 to 14, not 12 to 16 was the one that um, had come to heritage and I might be wrong. If she could just clarify on whether it's three parcels there that are, are going to be rebuilt. Through you, Mr. Mayor, can I just seek some clarification? Councillor Bothwell, are you referring to something that is in the status and activity sheet? Yes, that's correct. It's the 12 to 14 Main Street East, the uh, the Sunny Peach, the, the burned out fire on the corner of uh, Elm and Main there. Those, there's, I think there was three buildings that were burnt down and this application is for, I think it says 12 to 16, I have to rotate it. And I just wonder if it's 12 to 14 or if it is 12 to 16. And then if there's two other buildings that are still waiting to come forward on that property. Through you, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I'll check in with Walter to see if he has an update for council on that piece. Thank you, Antonetta. Um, with regard to that particular project, uh, that is just the corner lot. You're, uh, Councillor Bothwell, you're correct. There were three properties uh, subject to the fire. Um, and uh, there are there was a separate application for the middle lot that was subject to a minor variance application. Um, and this one is just the corner lot. Okay, so did I see something that from the middle building already come forward as well? Just that minor variance, that was it? That's correct. It's just the middle building uh, or the middle building just had a minor variance application that was approved. For two story. And this is a separate, this is the separate one on the corner. That's correct. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the application referenced in that particular uh, appendix to the report is uh, just for the corner lock. So we're going to see this one come to heritage as well, correct? Because I don't think we've seen this one yet. It will be brought forward to count. Okay. okay, thank you. And also, um, this is for Antonetta or for um, Walter as well. Um, the I I know I appreciate the comment on the number of NEC applications that you, as a commenting body, review and provide back to the NEC. 
Um, is there any way that we can get a little more detail on what those NEC applications are? And I ask that because um, the NEC territory covers some of the um, the abutment of the escarpment. So those properties on Main East and West um, can be within the NEC jurisdiction. And sometimes those are can be heritage properties or other properties that are of interest to the community. And we don't always hear, they don't come through as a formal planning application. So I'm just wondering if there's a way we could um, just note the address of the application. I think there's there's one right now on um, Wolverton that people are, that's for sale, that people are also interested in knowing what's gonna happen. I know there was one on um, Ridge Road that was for um, a church function or a church group and an event center. So those types of things we wouldn't hear about if they were just a notation on the bottom of a planning report that it's an application you reviewed. So it would be really helpful if there's a way we could just get the address um, of the NC application and just perhaps um, what uh, uh, just a, a quick breakdown of what that application is for, whether it's just a, um, a, a minor alteration or whether it's a, a brand new build or in the case of that event center, that would kind of interest more of the community. If there's a way to do that. Do, uh, is that possible? It, well, to do that, it would be uh, it would be quite onerous because we get quite a few applications. Um, however, if if there is uh, an application uh, or an NEC development permit, which involves the construction or demolition or alternate alteration of a heritage building, we would definitely bring it forward to the heritage committee for review and approval. Yeah, I'm not, yeah thank you. I, I'm not necessarily saying a heritage designated property because we have a responsibility where they're uh, in proximity to a cultural landscape or, and we've had a couple of as you're aware that um, were not heritage properties, but along Main Street that were impacted by um, other heritage properties or the landscape. So. I think it's just, um, um, and, and I think this came up at Heritage is how do we, you know, which ones do we see and which ones do we do we not see? So I think um, it just might be helpful just to list the address and this particular planning touch point only has one application on it. So I don't think it's onerous. I think the last one might've had seven. Um, and if it's just asking for the address and not any, not a whole lot of detail. Um, and actually, I think it's even available on the NEC website. So it's just it, it's just tra transmitting a bit of that into this so that people have a better idea. It's all part of planning. It's all part of what our community wants to know is going on. And um, I think if we can provide them with just the address, especially considering, like I said, a number of them are at the bottom of the escarpment and, th and they could impact uh, quite a number of neighbors. And, and people that are around there. So I just think it's just information. Anything we can provide would be helpful. Thank you. It's uh, to that point, it's my understanding that the Niagara Scarpment Commission does circulate uh, applications to uh, surrounding neighbors. Yeah. So through you, Mr. Mayor, we can simply add the addresses on there uh, with respect to the earlier comment about heritage. Uh, now that we have a dedicated heritage resource, they will then look for things that need or require a committee input and we can bring that to the heritage committee but certainly we can add the address next to the number of the applications that's perfect thank you antonetta much appreciated yes thank you antonetta i i do agree that that even though we're not the uh first in line body on on the escarpment uh council really it's it's much we're much better prepared if we kind of know at least a little bit what's going on 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 escarpment lands because they uh, they um, encompass a swath right through east to west in Grimsby so it's a large area uh, seeing no further questions moved by Councillor Dunstall second by Councillor Vane resolved that PA 21-06 planning and touch planning touch point dated March 1st 2021 be received all in favor that's carried. Need a mover and seconder for report PA 21-07. Councillor Frake, mover, need a seconder. Councillor Dunstall. Sarah, is there a delegation on this still? No, okay. 
All right, uh, any questions or comments now that we have a mover and seconder? Seeing none, uh, moved by Councillor Frank, second by Councillor Dunstall. Resolved that report PA 21 dated March 1st, 2021, regarding a draft plan of subdivision at 7 Park Road South be received and that the application be approved subject to the conditions listed in Appendix A of this report. All in favor? That's carried. All right, we're at um, resolution uh, 10.3 A, portable signs. It's moved by Councillor Vardy. Need a seconder. Councillor Frank. I'll read the resolution for the first time. Um, whereas section 146 of the Municipal Act 1990 contains specific requirements for municipalities regarding bylaws on their prohibition or regulation of signs and advertising devices. And whereas the town passed bylaw 1997 45 regarding signage pursuant to the Municipal Act 1990, and whereas the Municipal Act 2001 removed the requirements regarding signs of its predecessor, and whereas section 4.3 of the bylaw 1997 45 regarding portable signs infringes or places unreasonable limits on constitutionally protected expression as enshrined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms under section 2B, which states, Freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. And whereas courts have ruled that while municipalities in Canada have legal authority to prohibit and regulate signs and other advertising devices on public and private property within their geographical boundaries, they must do so without unreasonably infringing on the constitutionality guaranteed right of all individuals to freedom of expression. Whereas charging a fee or requiring a permit for portable signs impairs the free exercise of such fundamental charter rights. And whereas bylaw 1997 45, section 6.1 states if any part or parts of this bylaw are for any reason held to be invalid, those parts shall be deemed to be severable and the remaining parts of the bylaw shall remain in effect until repealed. And whereas bylaw 1997-45 is now 24 years old and has not been amended to stay in accordance with the charter decisions or legal opinion. And whereas portable signs are common and acceptable usage for the expression and promotion of ideas and supportive issues, be it resolved that section 4.3 of the bylaw 1997-45 be immediately severed and repealed in accordance with section six of said bylaw and that the Department of Planning, Building and Bylaw be directed to immediately cease the issuance of any fines or other legal action taken in respect to portable signs that are acceptable under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and that Bylaw 1997-45 be updated in accordance with the Municipal Act 2001, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and prevailing legal opinion. Councillor Vane. Um, just a clarification on something, the um, portable sign, um, I was under the impression that was something that, meaning portable it means it can move, um, that I was under the impression that was something like a sign on wheels. I, I'm, I, I'm just looking on Google here at uh, some examples of portable signs, and they're all like sandwich boards and that type of thing. I, I think what the Councillor Vardy is referring to here is not a portable sign per se. Uh, I believe, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she's talking about lawn signs and that type of thing. And while I'm all for freedom of expression and everything else, uh, I do think we want to be very careful what we open the door to. If we're so worried about heritage and yet you want to put up signs and saying, I hate my neighbor or, you know, whatever else, some other political statement or other statement, you're opening a big door. And uh, so I just be careful, that's all. Councillor Vardy, do you want to comment on that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I guess the big door has already been opened with the Charter of Rights and Freedom. Um, and it's called free speech. And uh, according to our bylaw, portable signs are lawn, lawn signs. 
uh, you know, like we have the kinds of things we use during elections or uh, your house is being painted by ex painters or, you know, uh, support the hospital. Uh, those are all portable signs under our bylaw. And uh, I just think our bylaw needs to be updated. Uh, so um, we're not infringing on the, the rights of, of our, our constitutional rights of our residents. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that's it. it. You know, it's a fundamental, fundamental freedom that we have uh, in Canada. And uh, the way our bylaw reads right now, uh, we are impeding that. So um, it's really just to uh, bring our bylaw into the, uh, the current standard. Thank you. Point of privilege, Mayor Jordan. Councilor Frank. Point of privilege. Uh, there's somebody's cell phone is going off. Can we ask members to, to turn their cell phones at least on mute or off? Could you could you do that, Mayor Jordan? Yes, uh, uh, Councilor Sharps directed me to uh, ask councillors to turn their cell phones to mute. Councilor Frank. That's a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've supported this this particular resolution, and I believe we should change our bylaw to accommodate it. I mean, we do in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms as Canadians, we have the right to freedom of expression, providing it's not vulgar, and there's, there are some stipulations around it. But I, I certainly think that we, as a as a as a as a forward community, should endorse this, and we should we should allow folks to have those reasonable signs on their lawns. If we don't change it, then every single save the hospital sign, every every save the woodlot sign, every real estate sign will have to come down. Uh, I mean, and that includes the, the new signs I see coming going up in some parts of town where it says slow down. People are putting those signs on their lawns. So where do we, you know, we, we I think we we should allow those subtle signs to to exist. And I and I believe we do have the right of freedom of expression. So I, I definitely will be supporting it and that's why I seconded it. Thank you very much. Councillor Bothwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, I've circulated to the clerk and, your, and yourself a draft amendment, a friendly amendment um, to Councillor Vardy's um, motion. Um, what I did upon research about the charter rights um, is look at other municipalities who may have faced this and Port Hope is one that has dealt with it. In 2005, they recognized that um, you know, they had to protect the rights under the charter and they put language into their signed bylaw um, that clearly uh, uh, addresses private advocacy signs, they're called. And um, the motion, I'll read it quickly. I'm sorry, it's a little bit long, but um, it's right from the Port Hope bylaw, um, which again was 2005, addressing charter rights and private advocacy signs. I think this addresses the concerns of the community. It addresses um, uh, uh, the concerns of Councillor Vardy. And I think that um, uh, it, it, instead of uh, in getting rid of or removing, uh, severing section 4.3, we leave the bylaw as it is, but we amend. Um, so following her motion, following the paragraph, whereas portable signs are of common and acceptable usage for the expression and promotion of ideas and supportive issues, be it resolved that section one, definition of bylaw 9745, a bylaw for prohibiting and regulating the erection of signs and other advertising devices be amended to add private advocacy sign, means a temporary sign erected for the purposes of expressing a thought, belief, or opinion in accordance with section 2B of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Te temporary sign means a sign that is not permanently displayed and not permanently affixed to the ground, but is installed in the ground using wooden or metal stakes or poles or similar structures or is attached to any other sign building or structure. And then section 1.2, definition of portable sign in bylaw 9745 be amended to read, portable sign means a temporary sign, not including a private advocacy sign, which is specifically designed or intended to be readily moved from one location to another and which does not rely on a building or fixed foundations for its structural support and includes signs commonly known as A boards, mobile signs and inflatable devices tethered to any building structure, vehicle or the device. 
And it's section 2.2 of bylaw 9745 be amended to add P, a private advocacy sign. That's the section on, on exemptions. And that section five, classification by use of bylaw 9745 be amended to add 5.4, private advocacy sign. A, a private advocacy sign is permitted in any zone provided the sign is not located on public property. B, the number of private advocacy signs on a private property or lot shall not exceed two. C, a private advocacy sign shall not exceed 2.0 meters in height. And, B, and D, a private advocacy sign shall not have an area in excess of 0 0.5 square meters. And that the Department of Planning, Building and Bylaw be directed to immediately cease the issuance of any fines or other legal action taken in respect to portable signs that are acceptable under the Charter Rights and Freedoms. And that Bylaw 9745 be further updated in accordance with the Municipal Act 2001, Charter of Rights and Freedoms and prevailing legal opinion. So that wording is from the Port Hope uh, sign bylaw. And I think it meets um, updating temporarily at least um, the circumstances that Councillor Vardy is addressing. So I would respectfully put that amendment forward um, if the mover and seconder are willing to do that. Thank you. Uh, that would be fine with me. It's also fine with me. All right, while the clerk's putting that amendment together, uh, we'll finish this discussion. Councillor Cadwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, reading, this, reading this notice of motion, I did some research too. I didn't go as far as Port Hope. I stayed more local. And uh, when we're looking to, uh, to review, our, again, I, and I, I think this, uh, our sign, uh, our sign, uh, Bylaw needs to have some uh, tweaking done to it. I do agree with that. I also respect the uh, freedom of speech of, uh, of people. And uh, part of my concern is that uh, some signs that are on public property, where I think they, they should be on on uh, private property, if you want to uh, express your opinions, and uh, I think you should be it should be kept more on private property. Also, what concerns me by with this notice of motion, does it reference at all uh, the uh, uh, public for public meetings? Because I know there are municipalities that are changing their their, uh, their or they're bringing their sign bylaws up to date, and they've had like three public meetings before there's been any changes in that. So to me, that's very important to engage the public. So I just trying to understand what this notice of motion is really trying to do. Is it also? Uh, I have to have a staff report. I want to hear from our, our professionals, our experts too. So I, I, again, I'm not against having some changes to our, uh, our signed bylaw, but I think the process that we have to move on this is, is working with staff. And also, as I mentioned, working with the public. Um, and with, with regards to businesses, uh, for, for their signage and that, sometimes, you know, there's uh, some areas of town, it's, it's just flooded with signs. So uh, with, with some of the new, sorry, some of the municipalities that I've, I've uh, researched, they're allowing their businesses uh, six months to conform or to confirm to the, to the new bylaws. So um, again, I, I wanna hear from staff. Uh, again, I, I'm not gonna reiterate what I just spoke about. So uh, I'm just trying to get clarification of this notice of motion, that's all. Thank you. Antonetta, do you want to comment now? Sure, through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you. You know, we're happy to take a look at both Councillor Vardy's motion and Councillor Bothwell's proposed friendly amendment, as well as Port Hope and some of the other benchmarking that we've been doing into bylaws and bring back a staff report and then also comment on the need for public engagement if we're doing a wholesale, you know, if we're doing a rewrite or things of those nature. So we're happy to bring back a report addressing and doing an investigation into all of the things that have been brought forward. Thank you. Councillor Vane. Um, just a, a couple of quick comments. The um, 
I, I'm all for freedom of speech and I have no problem changing the sign bylaw, except for I am concerned that a number of councillors have said, well, you know, based on the reasonable this, reasonable that, we have reasonable right now. Now you can't say, well, that's okay, but if they do something that offends me, it's not okay. So it, we're really cherry picking here. So I'm warning everybody, be very, very careful what you open. And if the best we can do is find some little town in the east end of beyond Oshawa uh, is, is our example. I agree with Councillor Cadwell. Let's find something local. Let's find another local one that's willing to, uh, that has changed your bylaw. Why hasn't Toronto changed it? Why isn't Burlington? Why isn't Hamilton? Why isn't Niagara Falls, St. Catharines? I mean, there's a lot of different things here. I mean, I, I really think we're just looking to create an issue where one doesn't exist. And uh, like I say, I'm all for freedom of speech. I have no problem with it. But you know, what, what's gonna say that we can't put up a sign, this is my neighbor's an idiot or I don't like the local bylaw guy or whatever. I mean, what's gonna be deemed reasonable? Who's gonna pick that? And that's what the, some of the counselors are saying. Well, as long as it's reasonable, what's reasonable? What's reasonable to you is not reasonable to me. So just like I say, be very, very careful what you ask for because it could have come back and bite us in the butt. Just saying. Councillor Ritchie. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. The first thing I wanna do is to clarify that the amendment that was put forward is now the actual motion and there is no more amendment. So this is the only motion that's on, on the table because it was done as a friendly amendment. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. So we just uh, got a whatever, a, a thousand, thousand word motion by Councillor Bothwell that none of us has seen whatsoever. No staff report done on this. And they bring it forward at the last minute without giving any, because I, I have to sit there and think that Councillor Bothwell had this written long time before tonight's meeting, that none of us had had the opportunity to read, to research, to look over, and yet are expected to make a decision tonight. Uh, I personally, um, you know what, I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for uh, a lot of things, but what I will not be for is for this to come forward as the actual motion now without a staff report, and without any of us having the actual words in front of us, without having time to understand it and look it over. So I will not be supporting this whatsoever tonight because uh, I do feel that there was lots of time to have this distributed. Thank you. Councillor Vardy. I think uh, I just wanna say, I think it's important that we address this motion tonight um, I, I think what Councillor Bothwell has done is just uh, provided some language uh, that has been, you know, deemed acceptable uh, somewhere else that, that, that makes it useful. So we're not having to recreate the wheel. Uh, I think my, the motion that you've had from me, uh, you've had uh, a notice of motion. So you've had it for at least uh, two weeks now to be able to look it over. We all know that there was a recent sign issue uh, that, that uh, has affected a resident. And the purpose of my motion is to do two things. One, make sure that uh, residents aren't, aren't penalized for putting up legally allowable signs uh, according to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And I don't think that needs a lot of thinking about uh, Councillor Ritchie uh, personally. Um, the, the other thing is we have a bylaw that's 24 years old. It's also a very comprehensive bylaw. And this notice of motion is, is asking to do two things. One, uh, relook at the bylaw and we can do, the staff can do their work on the bylaw. They can do their bang the table to get uh, consultation on the overall bylaw which was about 24 pages long or, or something like that. I mean, it's quite an extensive bylaw. And all I'm asking for is tonight, we tweak one little part of it so that we're, we're not uh, in immediate contravention of the Charter of Rights uh, because we've had an incident with a resident uh, who was put into a very difficult situation um, by the town. And uh, I'm trying to remedy that and I think it's important that we act when we've got um, serious concerns about residents, um, you know, about how residents are being affected. And so I'm not, I'm suggesting public consultation. 
absolutely on the overall bylaw, which is quite an extensive bylaw. It covers many, many, many things. I'm only asking for a tweak in the immediate of one small piece of this bylaw. Thank you. Councillor Frake. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make a couple of comments because I can't believe what I'm hearing. Uh, I mean, you know, Councillor Vane is saying that you know we should wait for every other municipality in the world to pass something to do something first before we do it. That's not the way it works. Let's be a leader in something. Let's start doing something that's where we're first. Where we become the leaders, not not the guys that are following. The other comment I want to make, and that is to Kevin to Ke Councillor Ritchie. He's just, I can't believe he said that, you know, this is a last minute, uh, you know, uh, motion or well, you're the master of last minute motions, Councillor Ritchie. So I'm sorry, I think you insulted our council in order. So I'm just one, I'm, it's Mayor, not out of order. I'm making a statement that you should yeah, not. Uh, Councillor Frank, uh, Councillor Ritchie has made a point of order. Thank you. Just want to make yeah, my point. Insulting other councillors. All right, that's noted. Councillor Cad or Councillor Ritchie, you're up next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, what just because what may be acceptable in another municipality, it may not be acceptable in ours. So I just wanted to address that. This bylaw has stood the test of time. And again, one of the good indications of a good bylaw is how it stands the test of time. You know, um, with everything like like I said, um, Councillor Vardy did state that. That she's only asking for one thing but now this with all the all the changes with the friendly amendment that councillor bothwell has made and not being able to see it i don't know if there's more than one item that could be changed there there could be multiple things that are changed and that's what i'm talking about this is now actually her motion in my opinion and i don't have the opportunity to review it and therefore like i said i would like to see a staff report i want to know what they have to say on this so therefore again i will not be supporting this motion thank you Councillor Cadwell. Thank you, uh, Mayor Jordan. Councillor Vardy brought up about the one little point to the to the uh, notice of motion. I'd like to hear staff's comment on the, I believe what, she, what she's referencing is the second last paragraph on uh, the page 332, but it's the last page of the report. Uh, in the Department of Planning, Building and Bylaw, be directed to immediately cease the issuance of any fines or other legal action taken in respect to portable signs that are acceptable under the under the Charter of Rights. I, I, I want to hear comments from staff, if I may, please. Antonetta. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, of course, I defer to Henry, who's on the ground for us, but to my knowledge and in our recent corresponding just this evening, there have been no fines issued with respect to signage to any of our residents. So we have not issued any fines. It has been education, compliance through education, speaking to the residents, yes, informing them of our bylaw, yes, but no fines have been issued. And I think that's an important point of clarity. Thank you. Councillor Vardy, you've already gone twice, so uh, I'll just read the uh, resolution now. Uh, moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Vardy. Oh, okay, I see Councillor Sharp's raised his hand. Councillor Sharp. Yes, thank you, Mayor Jordan. I have a question to staff. Um, what is deemed an appropriate sign, and what, or what's deemed an inappropriate sign. Um, and then I have a few more comments, but can you answer that question? Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you for the question. I'm not sure how we can answer what is deemed an appropriate and inappropriate sign, but I will defer to Henry and Paul who have been reading our bylaw in a lot more detail. So Henry or Paul, I'll leave it to the two of you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, currently we're not basing this on an appropriate, not appropriate sign. We're basing it off of what is considered a portable sign and what is not considered a portable sign. But so right now um, we're passing a bylaw 
we're, we're passing a revision to a bylaw and there's been some talk about appropriate and inappropriate. Um, how will that be determined? I, I'm asking specifically, what if someone puts a sign with swearing on it? I recommend and what's, con and what's considered swearing. Like I know there's certain words that like Facebook or certain things will let you get away with. And there's certain words that, that they won't. Right. And like, um, Will those words be allowed on our signs? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I suggest that we bring this to staff and uh, bring a report forward to council. Um, we can determine it through that. So then, but the way it's worded right now, it sounds like any sign is allowed. And I wonder like um, if any sign is appropriate I mean, I can pay any printing company to make me a, a bag sign that, that you could put up. I mean, I couldn't because I'm a counselor and I wouldn't because I'm just a respectable resident of the town. But um, but there are people who could put band signs up, right? Like, um, and uh, you could have like Metallica or like these heavy metal signs. I mean, I know it only allows two per property. This I think is what I heard in the, in the, version that Councillor Bothwell read, but um, I know there's also a lot of things that are probably covered by freedom of speech that are what I would consider inappropriate and that I don't want to see in my neighborhood, right? And, um, or not my neighborhood, but in our neighborhoods. And I don't want to subject the people in our neighborhoods whom I represent across town to, um, to this subjective freedom of speech I mean, it's not speech, first of all, it's, it's a sign, right? Like we have the right to say things, but um, then to put these signs up, I think that I could name off 10 things that are probably legally allowed that, that are something that you don't want to look at every day. And we don't know how long they'll be there for. And we don't know um, how many there will be. And in this case, our bylaws, which are, um, enforced by complaint basis. So like you get a sign up that says, you know, slow down, kids playing, right? And like, you don't get a complaint about that kind of sign. So nobody goes there to enforce that sign. It's, it's just not, not a thing that happens. I mean, if one of your neighbors says, listen, I really don't like that sign that says slow down, kids playing, and they make a complaint, then you have to take it down because it's not allowed. But um, that doesn't happen very often. So it's tough to make the rule based on these exceptions. And um, I think more frequently what we would see is um, people putting up signs that are offensive in some way, but are, are protected by free speech. And um, I'm not saying this will happen all the time, but this will happen. And um, it seems that the bylaw that we have right now is, uh, is sufficient. Then also to Councilor Ritchie's point, the change to this bylaw, like to be brought, this has happened more than once where, where a bylaw has been um, forwarded to the clerk during the meeting, a really wordy multi-paragraph bylaw that staff hasn't had a chance to review and that council hasn't been asked to make a decision on, which will, which will now write a bylaw. Like, and it's enforceable. And I haven't read it. I heard Councilor Bothwell read it. And it's Councilor Bothwell who's done this a few times. And um, it's not fair. So, so I'd ask to, um, to please stop doing that. And then, um, so I can't vote on it tonight. And I really think that our current bylaw is, um, sure. is the way that we should stay. So um, I know that this will probably end up to be a 5-4 decision. And I don't want people to think that, that I'm not voting or I am voting for this because of some team here, I really honestly think that this change to the bylaws is an inappropriate change. It's not something that I think that is what we want for our residents. One final comment and question. The reason this was initiated, there was a sign somewhere. Can, can someone tell me what the initial sign was? And um, could, could someone answer me that? Henry, Sarah. 
Janetta, your hands up. Yeah, Did so, you want to answer well, that? I, I wanted to speak separately just on the motion and the need for a staff report because we'll be enforcing this piece. But uh, as for the question on the floor, I would refer to Henry for the complaint that came through about the sign. Henry? Through you, Mayor. Um, so the original complaint was about an address at 97 Main Street East that had fueled this. Um, and I had proceeded to go to that location and educate that individual on what the current bylaw allows. Can you tell me what the sign says? The sign specifically I, actually, actually I, I'm going to interrupt here because it, we're not we're not debating that right now. And actually, Councillor Sharp, uh, I've been notified by the clerk that your five minutes are up. So uh, we'll move to Antonetta. Okay, I, I would ask for my second. I'll put my hand down and ask for my second round. We get two rounds. Um, I waited till the end. Well, and and it, I, I get Councillor Sharp, you it's you're very um, you can do that. And uh, but I'm moving to Antonetta right now. So I, I want, I would like to have the question answered. Councillor Sharp, you're, you're out of order. That's your first warning. Antonetta. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I think just earlier, what I was hoping to say is that uh, the motion did not ask for a staff report. And given that this will have significant staff implications from an enforcement perspective, and we wanna do due diligence, if appropriate consultation, so again, our staff position is please refer this back to staff so that we can look at it as well as some of the precedent that was referred to by the councillors and we'd be happy to bring back a report with our best recommendations. Point of clarification, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, Councillor Vardy. The motion asks that staff look at the bylaw. It's... Um, it says and that it, the second to last paragraph and that the Department of Planning, Building and Bylaw be directed to immediately cease the issuance of any fines or other legal action. Um, okay, and um, just a second here. Sorry, I'm just, yeah. And that bylaw 1997-45 be updated in accordance with the Municipal Act uh, 2001 because it's based on our bylaw 24 year old bylaw is based on an outdated version of the municipal act uh, and and so I'm it says in that the bylaw be updated in accordance with the municipal act 2001 the charter of rights and free, freedoms and prevailing legal opinion so it's all there so that's what staff does um, so I am in effect asking for for staff to to look at this bylaw they're the ones that would redraft it um and i can't imagine that staff would say this bylaw is fine when we know it's it's it forms its legal basis in out outdated municipal law and and it was also formed before the charter of rights and freedoms so thank you just a point of clarity mr mayor yes council richie i'm pretty sure in the the motion that the, it's all asked for after the changes are made. I'd like to know whether the changes should even be made at all. And that's why I'd like to see a staff report and what, and, and can they, may these changes have um, any kind of repercussions against us? Like if we're going to go into a, a, a speech battle with someone over their charter of rights and freedoms, it could be very costly. Antonetta, you wanted to comment on that? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I think we would share the same concerns. The motion directs us what to change. We would want to do a thorough investigation, due diligence, look at some benchmarking, some precedents, how best to deal with it, make sure that the town's risk exposure and the, the town's interest is preserved, and then bring something forward with our best recommendation. A point of clarification. Um, the, the direction to change is one very specific part and it is outlined in the motion. Um, I think that's a very important differentiation. And to be honest, I, I, if we don't do this and someone you know, puts forward a legal challenge, uh, we're on the wrong end of it. We, we, can't, we can't support what we're doing with a 24-year-old bylaw. 
and we can't support what we're doing and we can't support some of our recent past actions that took place. And uh, we're lucky that the resident isn't uh, filing a charter challenge against us or a harassment charge uh, against the town. Yeah, I'm sorry, laugh if you like, Mr. Cadwell, but people are pretty upset. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Point of order. Um, I believe that you uh, had mentioned to Councillor Vardy to, uh, before that she had spoken twice and that you would cut her off. And now she's made two speeches since then. Uh, trying to uh, push her point. I, I think it's been very clear. I'm not disagreeing that, you know, we need a report and let's get some more information. I think everybody can agree on that. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. On my second time around, and I waited till the end, um, but I, I do think that that point of clarification, I'm pretty sure it's a point of inquiry. And can the clerk, um, can she tell me what is a point of inquiry? And um, and are, are we using it correctly? Or are we using it just as a chance to take a second, third, and fourth time to speak while interrupting? So the clerk, can she answer that? There's only, I mean, no, sorry. I'm, I don't want to put the clerk on the spot. There are only three reasons why you can interrupt. One is for a point of order. One is for a point of inquiry. One is for a point of privilege. There is no point of clarification. And so um, we're using it to, to just interrupt and speak. And, and we've done the same with the point of order. And um, we, we need the mayor, I'm sorry, we need the chair of the meeting to enforce the rules. And um, I, it'd be helpful if the clerk could, could, could help the, the chair understand the rules. But um, I want to make one comment because I only have three minutes in my second round. And so I've seen some pictures of a sign that, um, that say, um, who represents word one? And then it says only reg. Um, is that the sign that's at 97 main street East? Who are you asking that question to? Uh, to Henry. I th really think talking about individual signs right now is completely off topic of the bylaw because that's not what the bylaw. Well, this is what started the, the this whole thing is started by 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 these signs. Is there's a I've seen pictures of a sign. Maybe I'm being rhetorical, but is that the sign that we're talking about? Henry, do you want do you have a comment on what the sign was or to appease Councillor Sharp? Through you, Mr. Mayor, my only comment to this is that I recommend a staff do a report to council. Okay, so thanks, Henry. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Um, so this sign that I've seen, and it's got councillors named on it. And um, I mean, I, I suppose there are residents in town who support councillors, but then the same councillors like support this, this motion. I don't think that... Um, I'm not going to support it. And uh, I don't think that we're being really fair about this. And so with that, I'll, I'll say thank you for my time. Councillor Cadwell. Here we go. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mayor Jordan, for allowing me to speak for the third time. I have Part of the notice of motion I, I do have some concerns with is the second last paragraph again, uh, especially where it, I'm not going to read through it, what's in front of everybody, but where, where there have been no fines issued as, as the as staff recommended or staff spoke that it's about education. So just reading that second last paragraph uh, where it, it says directed to immediately cease, you know, and, but there's been no fines issued. So I have some issues there. So anyways, look forward to the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cadwell. I'll read the resolution again, seeing no further questions. Moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Vardy. Be it resolved that section one, definitions of bylaw 9745, a bylaw prohibiting and regulating the erection 
of signs and other advertising devices be amended to add private advocacy sign means a temporary sign erected for the purposes of expressing a thought, belief, or opinion in accordance with section 2B of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Temporary sign means a sign that is not permanently displayed and not permanently affixed to the ground, but is installed in the ground using wooden or metal stakes or poles similar to or similar structures or attached to any other sign, building or structure. And that section 1-24 definition of portable sign in bylaw 9745 be amended to read, portable sign means a temporary sign not including a private act advocacy sign, which is specifically designed or intended to be readily moved from one location to another and which does not rely on a building or fixed foundation for its structural support and includes signs commonly known as A boards mobile signs and inflatable devices tethered to any building structure, vehicle or other device. And section 2.12 of bylaw 9745 be amended to add P, a private advocacy sign. And that section five classification of use of bylaw 9745 be amended to add 5.4 private advocacy sign. A, a private advocacy sign is permitted in any zone provided the sign is not located on public property. B, the number of private advocacy signs on a private property or lot shall not exceed two. C, private advocacy signs shall not exceed two meters in height. And D, a private advocacy sign shall not have an area in excess of 0 0.5 square meters. And the Department of Planning and Building and bylaw be directed to immediately cease the issuance of any fines or other legal action taken in respect to portable signs that are acceptable under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that bylaw 9745 be further updated in accordance with the Municipal Act 2001, the Charter of Rights and Freedom and prevailing legal opinion. Uh, recorded vote. Councillor Boswell? Yes. Councillor Dunstall? No. Councillor Frake? Yes. Councillor Cowell? No. Councillor Ritchie? No. Councillor Sharp? No. Councillor Vane? No. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's defeated. All right, we just need to, uh, we have a mover for, uh, oh, where am I? Section 10.3B, third party audit of email security. We have, uh, Councillor Vardy as the mover, Muni is seconder. Councillor Frake seconding. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On July 20th, 16A, this, is, uh, this motion is a reconsideration of, of a matter. Uh, we gave clear direction on July 20th, 16A. Uh, yes, I, I agree with you that yes, it is a reconsideration. So it uh, does need two thirds. I, I also believe Mr. Mayor that uh, at the time there would have been a recorded vote and only those who uh, in, voted in favor of the direction can bring it forward for consideration. All right, so we don't have a mover and seconder that voted in favor, I, I do believe, I'm not sure, but maybe you can uh, let me know if that is correct. I don't know, I, I don't know. I just don't get right. a report of votes. All right, well, maybe the clerk will look that up then. Councillor Ritchie is correct about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. We're just waiting to the for the clerk to clarify that uh, we may need a different mover and seconder to bring this to the floor. Mayor, if you need uh, the date of that that brought forth was July twentieth, and the item was sixteen A. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilor Ritchie. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a question? Councilor Vardy, yes. Um, this motion is based on information that was brought forward by the Integrity Commissioner. And uh, on that basis, can this motion be considered uh, as not a um, reconsideration? Um, I'll speak with the clerk on a ruling on that. I just get a ruling on that. Thank you. In um, conference with the clerk, uh, we've, we have decided that, that it is a reconsideration in the clerk, in my opinion. So we will have to get uh, two thirds and we will have to have someone who voted in the, it's in the affirmative. Through you, Mr. Mayor, everyone voted in the affirmative. So that means that this uh, motion can be read. Any comments? Seeing none, moved by Councillor Vardy. Councillor Cadwell. Councillor Cadwell, you're muted. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Jordan. I, yeah, so again, it, under the procedure, but it, it is still a reconsideration. Is that correct? Yeah, it's still a reconsideration, so it does need two thirds to, to pass. Thank you. Councillor Vardy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to state that I've received um, uh, a number of calls uh, and emails that are, well, calls from people who say that they are very worried uh, uh, since this was brought to light when the integrity commissioner came forward that uh, they're concerned about um, using, using our official emails to speak to us in the event that those emails might be, uh, be hacked. Um, the, the other concern is that I've heard uh, to, to the point where people were even concerned about using bang the table uh, in case that they gave opinions that might be contrary to what the you know, uh, the CAO and the town um, uh, want to have that, um, and that their their email would be attached. Um, like th there is considerable uh, concern uh, about this that I think is impeding residents' confidence in us 
to be able to, to speak to us uh, directly. And, and that concerns me, particularly if people are shying away from our communication tools that we put in place, like bang the table, uh, or if they feel that they, they, can't, they can't write their counselor for fear of some kind of um, you know, retribution. Uh, th this is a serious issue. And uh, it's for that reason that, I, that I've brought it forward so that we can give reassurances uh, to our residents um, that, it, that it is indeed safe to speak to your counselor and that your confidentiality uh, with your counselor um, you know, will remain intact. Councillor Ritchie. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. So I just wanna point out that uh, I believe the first meeting we had was July 15th, I think Councillor Sharp said, or 14th, 15th, somewhere around there. And July 20th, we, made, we took and gave clear and concise direction that everyone voted unanimously in for, uh, for. So I want to assure our, our citizens that we did take immediate action I also want to assure the citizens that I'm more than happy to cooperate with anyone that uh, that comes forward to investigate this matter. And then I also want to inform everyone that once again, if you look at the IC report, he never mentions that it's a town of Grimsby security breach. And be, having the emails that I have, there are other people that own these emails as well. But I have these pieces of paper that I own these pieces of paper. And on these pieces of paper, there is no town of Grimsby email addresses on the paper that I have. Thank you. Councillor Vane. Uh, Councillor Ritchie kind of said a lot of what I was going to say is that uh, I again I no resident has any concerns reaching out to me at any time. I've never had any complaints or concerns raised. Uh, and again as Councillor Ritchie said these are not town emails. So again we're trying to create an issue that doesn't exist. You're asking us to do an investigation of the town system when we have no proof the town system was hacked at all. We're talking personal emails as Council Ritchie said all along. So again, this, this seems like a kind of a lost motion or kind of a pointless motion because you're just saying it's like, well, I think something could have happened and I know it hasn't, but maybe it should, we should investigate just in case. Doesn't make any sense, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vane. Uh, seeing no further questions, I'll read the resolution. Moved by Councillor Vardy, second by Councillor Frake. Whereas the Integrity Commissioner Report of January 21st, 2021, IC 11767 1020, Vane complaint against Jordan, was presented to Council in open session of the February 1st, 2021 Committee of the Whole, whereas the report stated on July 13th, 2020, a council meeting was called by way of an email petition to the town clerk by a majority of the members of council, whereas the report stated certain documentation, email correspondence was identified and brought forward by Councillor Ritchie. The documentation came to Councillor Ritchie anonymously. Whereas the anonymous receipt of emails to Councillor Ritchie represent a serious breach of security. Whereas since the reporting of this occurrence, I have been contacted by constituents have who have expressed a lack of public trust and now are reticent to communicate by email as they fear an invasion of their privacy or the possibility of being targeted by the town. Be it resolved that A, the CIO who is responsible for operational matters launched an independent third party audit of email security, including determining how the security breach occurred and B, that the person or persons found to be responsibly have accountable according to the law and C, that Council, Councilor Ritchie fully cooperate and provide any and all information as to how he came to be in receipt of said emails and D, that the CAO return to Council as expeditiously as possible with the independent third party inquiry results and E, that the CAO reassure that Council and residents and restore public trust that a remedy to this breach has been implemented and email security will be vigorously monitored. Recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell. Here. 
Sorry, I didn't get that, Councillor Bothell. Yes. Okay. Councillor Dunstall? No. Councillor Frake? Yes. Councillor Cadwell? No. Councillor Ritchie? No. Councillor Sharp? No. Councillor Vane? No. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Council Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's defeated. Moving to section 11, notice, notice of motion. motion. No, Town of Grimsby, notice, notice of motion. motion. Introduction date, March 1st, 2021. 2021. Subject, Subject flood, flood plan requested, requested by Councilor Frey. Whereas, Whereas the, the Town, Town of Grimsby is affected by a flood plain 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 caused by water, water flowing down the escarpment and pooling across its east-west boundary. And whereas the flood plain causes general, general property, property damage, damage and presents many residents, residents and, and businesses, businesses in the town from enjoying, improving, and using their property to its full extent. And whereas residential areas near Arrowhead Park and numerous businesses on the South Service Road have been immensely impacted by flooding. And whereas the US Geological Survey has identified that urbanization generally increases the size and frequency of floods and may expose communities to increasing flood hazards, and whereas urbanization, including town approved development, removal of trees and related activity alters the natural flow of water, causing, causing it to find alternative paths. And whereas these changes result in flooding in areas previously not affected and or increased flooding in existing flood prone areas, whereas council has identified responsible development and the environment as part of its strategic priorities. And whereas services associated with the prevention, mitigation and resolution of flooding issues through out Grinsby are currently identified, addressed, and maintained through the town's public works programs, and costs are covered mostly by the development charge process. Therefore, be it resolved that town public works staff bring a report to council which gives an overview of the cause and effect of floodplains and the process utilized by the town to offset current and future floodplain issues, and also issue a public communication to inform our residents and businesses accordingly. I acknowledge that the notice of motion will be given consideration at the March 22nd, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting. Up next, we move to section 12, correspondence. Uh, need a mover and seconder to get it on the table. Councillor Frank, Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Frank, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolved that the correspondence under administration and finance were with reference to MPAC's 2020 Municipal Partnership Report. Minister Steve Clark consulting on growing the size of the Greenbelt. City of Thorold Medical Cannabis Grow Operations Resolution Public Safety Concerns. Niagara Regional Housing 2020 Fourth Quarter Report. Minister of the Solicitor General Surge Capacity Roster for Provincial Emergency Operations Center, POC. MPCA Board of Directors meeting schedule, City of St. Catharines living wage certification application, and the correspondence on public works with reference to Region of Niagara discontinuation of free recycling exchange program April 1st, 2021, be received. All in favor? That's carried. Next meeting of the Committee of the Whole is scheduled for March 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we, will, uh, this, we will get back at uh, 9.45 uh, to start our regular committee meeting. Uh, this meeting is adjourned.
Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the uh, council meeting of Monday, March 1st, 2021 to order. First, we'll start off with uh, playing in the national anthem. So everyone rise. First, are there any, is there any disclosures of pecuniary interests? Seeing none, uh, we move to number four, approval of the agenda. Councilor Bothwell, did you have anything? Yes, Councilor Bothwell. I'm just gonna, it's under adoption of the previous minutes. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll have you as a mover. And a secondary, we have Councilor Dunstall. Moved by Councilor Bothwell, second by Councilor Dunstall, resolved that the agenda for the council meeting of March 1st, 2020. One be approved. All in favor? That's carried. Up next, we move to number five, adoption of previous minutes. Councillor Bothwell. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I'd like to lift the Committee of the Whole Minutes, February 16th, please, on item 5A. Thank you, that's noted. Do you want to do that first? Yeah. Uh, which, uh, which, I, which, which item, item did, did you, you want, want on that? that? It's with respect to the discussion um, on the minutes item of 9.1A. The uh, motion CW2145. It's CAO 2106. All right, the clerk will prepare that. I have you as the mover, Councillor Bothwell. I just need a seconder, Councillor Frake. Councillor 
and discussion. Pardon? Oh, pass it. Oh, yeah, sorry. We have to pass this for separate consideration, then we'll discuss it. Moved by Councillor Bothwell, second by Councillor Frank. Resolved that resolution CW21 45 be lifted from the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes of February 16, 2021, for separate consideration. Recorded Mayor, vote. Mr. Yes. Can we have what that exactly the whole title of that report is? Yep, the clerk will uh, get that for you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the title is CAO 2106, Reporting on Costs and Related Cases for Integrity Commissioner Complaint, Vane versus Jordan. The motion reads, resolve that report CAO 2106 dated February 16, 2021 be received, and that since mayor's correspondence with this individual was deemed to be a breach of the code of conduct and that the mayor, Jordan, and that Mayor Jordan be required to pay the $1,302.62 that this individual charged the town for this correspondence and that report IC11767-1020 be forwarded to those individuals pertaining to the directions given by council via uh, various resolutions from the closed session of July 13th. Councilor Bain. Um, to the clerk, um, Mr. Mayor, is um, is this are we reconsidering a motion here? No. No, we're lifting for a separate consideration. One of the minutes. Yeah. Um, sorry, to the clerk and to the mayor, if I may clarify. Yes. So it isn't exactly related to this. Uh, it's related to the timing of the discussion on this motion, and it's actually a procedural, a rule of procedure. Um, that uh, with respect to my request for information made during that discussion. And that the clerk, uh, it's asking to amend the minutes to include my request for information or my point of information, um, where I specifically asked the clerk to, uh, that the integrity commissioner has made a ruling and a decision that was inconsequential to the mayor's. As a result, this is creating a financial penalty to the mayor. And I'd like to know from the clerk or legal if that's setting a precedent where now we're taking the integrity commissioner's recommendations and we're actually doing something that's outside the municipal act where we're now putting a penalty on the mayor and asking him to reimburse the cost as a result of the integrity this investigation. So I need to know. So I need to know more about that too. Is this a practice that is acceptable or not? And I think the clerk needs to come back to us or, or the CAO with whether that creates a precedent or even if it's permitted. And that was a request for information. And that's not debatable, and that just needs to be recorded in the minutes and then move forward for the clerk to address. Thank you, Councillor Bothwell. So I don't know if I actually have to lift it or if it's just a matter of the clerk amending and correcting the minutes to reflect that request for information. I've, I've got direction from the clerk that she is able to uh to correct that information and put that in the minutes. That's correct, right? Okay. Yeah. So if the clerk could just respond that uh, what is being recorded as a request for information, that would be appreciated. Great, Sarah, that's good. You can do that. All right. So what the, what does that, the, I guess that um, then we vote on, on uh, this as amended then, uh, right? But so we need to, don't need to lift it now. Okay. All right. So, so um, Councillor Bothwell, um, I, I believe we don't need to lift it any longer because it, that correction is being noted by the clerk. Okay. Thank you. If she could just, uh, if she needs me to read the actual request for information, I can do that. Or I think it's important that we get it on the record correctly. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that would be uh, prudent. Um, uh, so uh, I would like it to, to reflect the actual wording from the transcript. Um, and if the clerk wishes, she can go back to the transcript at 2.8.03 of the video, um, where I state that I'd like to know from the clerk or legal if it's if the motion is setting a precedent where now we're taking the integrity commissioner's recommendation and we're actually doing something that is outside the municipal act 
where we're now putting a penalty in the mayor and asking him to reimburse a cost as a result of this integrity commissioner investigation. I, so I need to know more about that too. And is there a practice that is acceptable? Is this is that a practice that is acceptable or not? And I think the clerk needs to come back to us or the CAO with whether that creates a precedent or even if it's permitted. I will send that language of the transcript to the clerk as well so that she can have that. Thank you. Perfect. So now we move back to the uh, original um, motion. Well, is that debatable? No. Um... Um, I understand that's not debatable because it's a request for information. Yeah, I'm just clarifying if uh, other councillors want to lift something in the minutes or if they, uh, uh, I, I realize it's not debatable. Councillor Sharp. Hey, um, I'd like to lift that same item and I'd like to lift it because I'd like to make an amendment to the wording in, in the resolution that we passed. And um, I sent that amendment to the clerk. And I would just like to clarify that, that Mayor Jordan would not be required to pay the bill, that Mayor Jordan, his pay would be suspended in an amount that represents the amount that was of that bill. Because I, I, I believe at the time I said, that I don't care which way it goes as long as it gets that intent out. And um, I just wanna make sure that that what we're doing is we are suspending pay in the small amount of $1,302.62, which represents the amount of that bill. I think that that was a fair way to determine um, that amount. And um, from Councillor Bothwell's inquiry here- um, We need to get, we need, like to get we need to get- The uh, 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 Councillor Sharp. I'm sorry, I had the floor, but I, I just felt like the verbiage yeah, might be well, incorrect. I'm over ruling you right now because we need to vote on this before we can discuss it. Okay. So do you want different movers and seconders now? Yeah, so Councillor Sharp, you want to move it now to lift it? Yes. Yes. And a seconder? Councillor Cadwell. Moved by Councillor Sharp, second by Councillor Cadwell. Resolved that resolution CW 21-45 be lifted from the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes of February 16th, 2021 for separate consideration. Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, so I, I was saying earlier, I, I want to change the, the verbiage. I don't want to be mistaken. Maybe we've used the wrong words to describe the motion. And um, when, when I said in the motion that um, the original motion said uh, that Mayor Jordan be required to pay $1,302 that this individual charged the town, I'd like to change it to say um, that Mayor Jordan's pay be suspended in the amount of $1,302.62 representative of the amount that this individual charged the town for the correspondence and the report I see, et cetera. So if I could have support of, of my fellow councillors, um, I would like to make that amendment to the motion so that it can't be confused that we are making the mayor pay a bill for the town and that what we are really doing is that in light of the breach of the code of conduct, we would be um, suspending the pay of the small amount, $1,302 representative of the amount of that bill, which I think is fair. Um, if, if you would support me, I would like to reconsider, sorry, I would like to lift this motion. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. I'll read it again and, and moved by Councillor Sharp, second by Councillor Cadwell, resolved that resolution CW 21-45 be lifted from the Committee of the Whole meeting minutes of February 16th, 2021 for separate consideration. Recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? No. 
Councillor Dunstall? No. Councillor Frake? No. Councillor Catwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? No. Mayor Jordan? No. That's defeated. Need a mover and seconder for the rest of the uh, minutes. Move Councillor Dunstall. And seconder, Councillor Frank. Moved by Councillor Dunstall, second by Councillor Frank. Resolved that the Committee of the Whole minutes of February 16th, 2021 be approved and the Council minutes of January 16th, 2021 be approved and that the Budget Committee of the Whole minutes of February 23rd, 2021 be approved. All in favor? Oh, right. Councillor Bothwell, sorry. You need to say as amended? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the committee of the whole minutes, February 16th, are approved as amended. So that's the only change. And um, we may as well have a recorded vote on this just to keep everything straight. Councillor Bothwell? Yes. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? Yes. Councillor Catwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Mayor Jordan? Yes. That's carried. Now we, now we move to uh, number 12, Regional Councillor Update. Uh, Councillor, Regional Councillor Furtick, you still here? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> All right. Well, good evening. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mayor Jordan, and uh, thank you, Council, for giving me an opportunity again to speak to you. I, I'm only going to touch briefly on some of these issues because uh, some of them are, are really, really long. And uh, uh, anyway. Uh, the Niagara Transit Governance Study is still proceeding with the GO program, uh, and it's going full speed ahead. Uh, feedback is still being conducted with the local area municipalities to receive input on the proposed governance and the financial models um, for the consolidation of the uh, transit to uh, fully inform um, for the discussion to for future uh, triple majority. Um, the region is monitoring the implementation of an optional business tax subclass for consideration in future taxation years, starting in 2022. Uh, the treasurer will bring forward further information because there's still a lot of work to be done on this. And this is um, um, coming through from the province. Uh, so it, it's got a whole bunch of different classes and some qualifications. Um, the region is forming a diversity, equity and inclusion advisory committee. And the goal of the committee is to address bias and discrimination and its negative impact on quality of life, safety, health, and inclusion for the diverse communities in Niagara, providing a safe place for all people to voice their opinions in order to work together to promote and foster understanding and inclusion in Niagara. Council is always looking uh, to proceed with the creation and the maintenance of a lobbyist register. Um, 
again, it's uh, under study right now, and we haven't got the final recommendations as yet. Uh, this, there's also a study being conducted about source protection program with the concept of the prevention in the safeguarding of our drinking water for our communities and our health. The, the current plan only speaks uh, to municipal supply protection. And the plan is obviously being monitored uh, along with the NPCA. Council is asking the province uh, resolution came forward by Councillor Senzik to eliminate the 6.1% tax that is being applied to all VQA, which are 100% grown wines, on sales in their 2021 budget. The Niagara official plan is continuing to meet the provincial deadline of July 1st, 2022. So there's still coordination going on between the region and the local area municipalities in order to meet that deadline. Uh, the Waste Management Planning Steering Committee has received an update for the planning, management, and operation of its facilities, programs, and services. The new curbside collection is doing very well with very few complaints that, uh, that any new contractor might have. Um, the region processed last year uh, 70,000 tons of material, composted 58,000 tons of residential organic waste and disposed of 118,000 tons of waste. Ontario is shifting uh, to a full producer responsible for the blue box system, sorry, blue box program. Under the draft regulations, the Niagara region has been identified for the transition in 2024. I'll bring you further reports as we progress towards that. I see that Public Works has addressed the free exchange of the blue box and the green bin. Um, it is, it will be terminated at April the 1st. Just so that you know, the, re, the cost is savings for this particular program is around $111,000. So um, the, the region has been very uh, good in, in providing uh, uh, people with uh, damaged boxes and replacing them for nothing. But after the 1st of April, uh, you're going to have to pay for them. Um, Grimsby had 11 illegal dumping fractions uh, last year. So uh, they're doing very, very well. I just want to say, um, Mayor Jordan and the rest of council and I, I understood that the flags were at half mast this last week for the passing of Ron Bracher, who was a gentleman and a scholar. He was uh, with, uh, with us for many years. And uh, I just want to send out my condolences to, <clears throat> to his family. Anyway, uh, that's all I have, Mayor uh, Jordan and Council. So if you need me to answer some questions, I'd be more than pleased. Yes, it looks like uh, Councillor Sharp has a question for you, then Councillor Cadwell. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. To Councillor Furtick, I appreciate the report. I really appreciate that you brought that about the, um, the blue bin replacement. You, you said if we have damaged blue bin, does that include gray bin? And um, we can take them down to Town Hall or to, not Town Hall, the Operations Centre, we can get them replaced? Till the 1st of April, yes. That's, that's excellent. So my yep. blue bin and my gray bin both have like big massive cracks in them. They get blown in the wind or whatever, I don't know, maybe dropped by the garbage man. But um, so I've been using these broken bins for so long and um, it's, I know they're only like six or bucks to replace them, but it's great to, to know that if you have a damaged 
blue bin or gray bin or green bin, I think I heard, that you can take them down to um, the operations center that's by the Legion and get them replaced for free until April 1st. Can I just ask um, if Public Works is on the line, what time does the operations center open and close at? I would imagine it's the same hours as uh, town hall, but uh, through uh, through the mayor to the councilor, um, the after the first of April, you're going to have to pay. So, but you remember to take down your damaged bin because otherwise you're not going to get it replaced. No, I will. And um, but I've been hanging onto these broken bins for a long time. They're like they still hold recycle on them, but. Um, they got big cracks, and so that's great news for me, and um, I appreciate that. Thank you again, Councillor Furtick. You're welcome, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Cadwell. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Through you to uh, Councillor Furtick. Just a question uh, with regards to the, uh, understand the Town of Lincoln is having their presentation with regards to the transit, regional transit that we had, I think two or three meetings ago. So question that came up is uh, the uh, on-demand transit, how long of a pilot project is that? And I'm, I don't mean to put you on the spot if you don't, you don't know the, know the, the years of, of the pilot contract. Uh, if you could get back to me, I'd really appreciate that, uh, Councillor. So yeah, but I'm just, would you happen to know how long the uh, pilot project for uh, on-demand transit, is it two years, three years? Let's have some discussion with other councillors. Thank you. Uh, through the mayor to uh, Councillor Cadwell, it's my understanding that uh, uh, there is the 2021 uh, is it's only a two year project with with the option of a third year. So as long as you uh, pay your two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the region, I'm sure that we'll continue with the program. So it, it, you had it last year and this year. So and. I believe there's one more year that they'll they'll do it. Yeah, thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, it, it's a great project. It's a great initiative for Grimsby, uh, as, as the numbers are showing. And these numbers are showing during a, during the pandemic, which I I think uh, my personal opinion that when we get uh, you know vaccines in the arms and uh, I think get back to some form of normalcy of a lifestyle, I think you'll see the numbers even higher. But uh, Thank you for that information, uh, Councillor. My pleasure. Thank you. Just, just a clarification, if I may. Um, the, it started uh, the project, uh, pilot project started August seventeenth, uh, 2020. So it, it's a two-year, um, it's yeah. a two-year two program. So. Yeah. So that's right. I think there's a they, they've asked for a third-year option, but I, I can't. I'll, I can confirm that, but it, it is two years. Yeah. Indications are that they will um, they will opt for the third year, but judging by the popularity, so as long as you keep paying, they'll keep <laughs> they'll keep yeah. doing. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Furtick. You're welcome, thank you, Mayor. Yep. Now we'll move to bylaws. Need a mover and seconder for the first reading of the bylaws. Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Vane. Moved by Councillor Ritchie, second by Councillor Vane. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaws 21-11 and 21-12 inclusive, and that same be read a first time. All in favor? It's carried. I need a mover and seconder for second and third reading. Councillor Frake, Councillor Vane. Moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Vane. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 21-11 and 21-12 inclusive read a first time, now be read a second and third time and finally pass and the mayor and town clerk do sign and seal the same and the rule of councils to the contrary notwithstanding. All in favor? That's carried. Now we move to announcements. Uh, 
I'll just start and then I'll take uh, questions from the or announcements from the floor. Just want to announce that the Town of Grimsby uh, Civic Net Recognition Program will be happening again in 2021 and full details are available at grimsby.ca. This is an excellent way to celebrate special achievements, outstanding volunteer efforts and exceptional community support efforts benefiting Grimsby. So it's a really positive thing. So get out there and um, go to grinsby.ca and, um, and sponsor that uh, or, or uh, nominate that special individual that has helped out in the community and made Grinsby a better place. Councillor Dunstall. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to let you know, I was uh, driving along UEW past Casablanca, past the, that new commercial building built by DeSantis Homes, and notice that they have now moved in on the fifth floor of the building, as they promised uh, from times gone by, the previous council, they, it, it, uh, Gabe DeSantis had said that when he built that building, he would move his offices here to Grimsby, and he has done that. I understand he has about 50 employees in that building. So that's a, that's a plus for us. I'm sure that uh, they'll want to uh, spend a few dollars in our community when they're here working. So I, I just wanted to make that announcement that they've officially moved to Grimsby and they had promised to do that years ago when they completed the building. So I guess he is the first tenant and I, I hope he sees a few more. It's uh, it's a tough world out there in the commercial business, uh, office business, that is, uh, with so many people working from home in the pandemic. So I hope he's successful in uh, acquiring a few more tenants, but he's the first. So it was great to see. It's good for Grimsby. It's good for the, the business community. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Denzel. That certainly is good news. Um, welcome to Grimsby, Gabe. Councillor Cadwell. Yes, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Just a couple of things. Uh, I'd like to uh, follow up with uh, Councillor Furtick mentioned about uh, Mr. Ron Brecher, who was our uh, CAO for 27 years. It's quite an accomplishment. Uh, I worked I worked under Ron uh, when I worked for the Water Department. I was the uh, negotiating rep, rep, rep for the Water Department. And I got to say that uh, through negotiations of contracts and that, uh, Ron was always fair. Uh, he, you knew where you stood with Ron, and and he he had such a compassion for the community, and he, he just he helped Grimsby grow in the right way. So, uh, again, I've already sent my condolences to uh, to his wife Carolyn, and uh, I know the family very well. We were, we were Ron used to live two doors uh, down from me on Whitaker Avenue. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, very sad to see. The, and on the, uh, another note, I would like to just uh, bring to your attention, I hope I'm not creating a jinx here, but the Grimsby Diamond uh, solar powered lights are there on, on February 24th of this year, they're one year old. And uh, I reached out to uh, Acting Chief Thompson just for some stats, and I think these stats are incredible. Uh, the year before we had the, uh, the lights installed in the stop sign areas, there was 13 accidents that, that uh, GFD responded to. Since the lights have been in, in, in place, in operation, they've responded to one accident. So uh, again, uh, uh, just a heartful, heartfelt thank you to uh, Mr. Uh, Sam Osterhoff, and again, uh, Harry, uh, Mr. Mr. Slanger, CEO and staff, and, and the support of council too, that we got this done. So, uh, and again, that's uh, it's, it's a great, Great news, and the stats are really uh, showing that a very, very worthy uh, cause there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cadwell. That certainly um, is a major reduction. Uh, thanks for the stats, uh, Chief Thompson. Councillor Bothwa. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I just would like to uh, remind the community that the library has their spring 2021 um, Grimsby li Library uh, there. The Grimsby Author Series is coming uh, again uh, via Zoom with uh, COVID. Unfortunately, we can't have them in person, but it's been very, very successful via Zoom. 
Um, they were offered free previously, but as this is a main fundraiser for the library as well, there's a very small donation for the one that's being coming up on March 9th at 7 p.m. They're asking for $10 um, if you buy tickets online on the uh, Grimsby Public Library website for this event. There's some great authors. Of course, they always bring in some of the, the highest profile leading authors. Uh, this one is going to be uh, Jesse Thistle, From the Ashes is the book, and Jennifer Robson, One Darkest Night, or Darkest Night. Um, so two great authors, $10. Great event, March 9th, 7 p.m. via Zoom webinar. So get together with a bunch of your neighbors and friends, one, one $10 payment, and everybody can sit in front of the Zoom and listen to the authors. Great way to uh, enjoy. Well, actually, you can't. It has to be your family members at this point. Sorry. So you're going to have to get your kids and your husband and everybody to sit and watch the Grimsby author series with you. But it's gonna be great and uh, look forward to uh, seeing a really great turnout again with this one. And at least until COVID is over, we can't do this in person. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bothwell. Uh, seeing no further announcements, I, I just wanted to comment on Ron Bracher as well. Uh, 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 what a service 27 years with the town of Grinsby as CAO and lifelong or and resident uh, of Grinsby uh, um, and until his passing uh, he was just uh, I, I, I didn't know him well but I, I did know him and um, he was he was just uh, um, someone that that was definitely a champion of Grimsby and he will be sorely missed thank you yeah oh. all right the next meeting uh, is scheduled for March 22nd, 2021, following the Committee of the Whole. And we just have the confirming bylaw. Need a mover and seconder. Councillor Ritchie and Councillor Frake. Moved by Councillor Ritchie, second by Councillor Frake. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 21 13 inclusive, and that be. Same be read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. Need a mover and seconder for second and third reading. Councillor Vardy, Councillor Bothwell. Moved by Councillor Vardy, second by Councillor Bothwell. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw 21 13 inclusive, read a first time, now be read a second and third time, and finally passed. And the mayor and town clerk do sign and seal the same, and the rule council to the contrary notwithstanding. All in favor? That's carried. Meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. <laughs>